Hey, uh, we're, we're here at the SUNYAC semifinal. Should be a good one. Excited to do my third straight SUNYAC. It, a, uh, a very good game. Excited for it. Hello and welcome into the Max Yield Gymnasium where we have the semifinals for A weekend of revenge, a weekend of the highest magnitude, and a weekend where anything can happen. You better start expecting the unexpected because it's the start of SUNYAP Championship Weekend here on WTOP 10. Welcome to the pregame show. I'm your host, Matt Sheramita, joined by Jason Samville and Nick Mason. Guys, 
a long day today. We got two back-to-back -back playoff games, the first one being the SUNY New Paltz Hawks and the Oneonta Red Dragons, followed by the Cortland Red Dragons and Oswego State, and it's Gold Rush weekend. How are we feeling today? An exciting weekend of basketball. I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to see both games. Every game is going to be, it's going to be a great matchup and just an incredible weekend overall. Absolutely. Nick, how you You feel? said it's going to be a long day. I disagree. I think it's not long enough. I would like to have more <laughs> SUNYAC basketball. We've got two great matchups today. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see some playoff basketball. Well, I got good news for you. There's more SUNYAC playoff basketball than tomorrow. We're going to look at the playoff schedule for this uh, upcoming weekend today. We have game one starting in 30 minutes. Oneana versus New Paltz. We kind of already touched on it. And then game two following that, Cortland versus the number one seed, Oswego State. Saturday is where we get into the consolation game at 2 o'clock. The uh, players, uh, the teams are undetermined, and it's going to be the losers of both of tonight's games. And then the SUNYAC championship at 4 p.m. is the winners of those uh, two games that are happening momentarily. So just that's kind of your look at the weekend. We're going to then look at the full bracket just to kind of see like how teams got to their positions. As you see, Plattsburgh and Cortland was that first game in the playoff round, the overtime thriller. Oneana upsetting the number three seed Brockport. We get into the four seed Cortland versus the one seed Oswego, and then the two seed New Paltz and the six seed Oneana. Suniac Championships tomorrow, TBA. Yeah, uh, exciting uh, game yesterday. Plattsburgh, Cortland, just a thriller. And uh, just an incredible back and forth game between the two. And, you know, look at Oneana. Uh, playing a nice game uh, against Brockport and uh, two well-deserving teams to be in the position that they're in tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Nick, I want to look at this Oneana play-in game as well. And just, um, you know, they had this huge upset over that number three ranked Brockport Golden Eagles team. And with this momentum, as well as, you know, taking down their opponent today in New Paltz twice in the regular season, do you think they have that dark horse run in them in this tournament? Well. To know if they'll have the run, I'm not sure, but I think they do have the potential to have that run because Oneana is just the exact definition of a dark horse. They're a team who plays very well. They play good as a team, as a unit, and they shouldn't be underlooked just because they're the number six seed. Obviously, we see they already got their first win, and that builds momentum, especially in the playoffs. No, absolutely, building up momentum on a short turnaround. Uh, for Oneana and you know that that game last night was just so exciting. It, it, it was a great back and forth game. 15 lead changes for both sides. So just a great back and forth game, building off the momentum uh, from Oneana. It was just a, an incredible matchup for them. So, I mean, you see earlier this week, 75-68 over Brockport on the road. And what kind of stands out to me, Brockport? They didn't shoot the ball well beyond the arc. They kind of tried to extend their range a little bit, kind of. Uh, bit them from behind and you see they fall short here in this game also uh you know they out did, it, out did them on the free throws but you know when you're not hitting shots from the field it doesn't really matter no and both teams didn't quit in the game i mean uh, you look at the score uh yeah, as you said brockport shot poorly from the field but again they stuck with it and kept uh they were they were alive up until the end of the game so it was an exciting matchup great back and forth game and uh, incredible uh to kick off the playoffs in the suniac it took a different kind of mentality for Oneana to win that game. When you're coming into the playoffs as a number six seed, the last seed in the SUNYAC race, you're expected to lose that game, especially against a number three team. So coming out with a win there was big for them. I think that sets them up for a good game today. Absolutely. I think Brockport is a much better team on paper. Oneana, they are a team that will consistently compete and give you their all, and they've done it the last couple weeks of the season here. They came to Oswego a couple weeks ago, sent them to overtime, uh, didn't pull out that game, but that's kind of what they do. They are a fighting team. Last year in that play-in round, it was a lot different of a story for them. Uh, they, ha they, did not, uh, yeah, they didn't do so well against New Paltz. They're playing them today. But last year, kind of the same deal except New Paltz. They really got the best of them. 72 to 48. Oneana not getting anything to fall for him. 17 for 65 from the field. But in that game, they did not have Xavier Hill. He has kind of um, come up in this league. He's been a great addition to their team. And I just want to ask you guys, will he be an X factor for Oneana today, even though he wasn't there last year? Oh, he's going to be a, a, a huge factor for uh, New Paltz tonight, uh, you know, or for Oneana tonight, but you know, I look at that 
uh, the last time around for these teams. The big thing for uh, New Paltz and their success was their defense. He played a beautiful game defensively last year. They looked like the 1985 Bears on defense, just holding the Red Dragons to 48 points, shooting 26 percent from the shooting, shooting from the field. They they just played an incredible game uh, defensively, and that's the reason why they won uh, last year around. And yeah, absolutely. And. Uh for the other side, we got Cortland just coming off of a huge overtime thriller. Top three on Sports Center, top ten. They've won seven in their last eight, Nick. So I ask you, what position does having this momentum put Cortland in after this huge win against Plattsburgh the other night? That's huge. I think that game really represented what Cortland is as a team this year. Cortland has some snipers. They can shoot the ball from the three-point line. So the fact that they won in overtime off a game winner like that, it just plays into what the team is, the team's personality, and that also plays into the playoff momentum. Playoffs are different than the regular season. It's a whole new season. Your record does not matter at this point. It's win in the playoffs. Cortland got their first win in the playoffs. That can carry over to today. They have a tough matchup, obviously, against the number one Oswego Lakers. But momentum's a thing in the playoffs, and I think that could help Cortland. Yeah, and I mean, you see it here. I, they didn't sh shoot a lot. Um, Plattsburgh outshot them, 70 shots on the game. But Cortland, as you said, they got snipers. And you also talk about their playoff experience. They do have a difficult task at hand with Oswego State. The last time they played Oswego State was 2020. And in that game, you had Jeremiah Sparks and Jamal Akile as freshmen. They are still sticking around, and they are here today. But for Cortland, completely new unit, new head coach this year. So Oswego hasn't really seen much of this new Cortland team. So I ask you, with that playoff experience, do, they, do you think they have the upper hand or it, are they at a disadvantage with not really knowing what to expect out of these Red Dragons, Jason? No, I think Lakers uh, definitely have the momentum going into this game. Undefeated in Suniac play for the Lakers. And just, again, the veteran presence on this Oswego team is just incredible. And that's what's going to be huge for them tonight, especially in the playoff. It's just a different atmosphere. You know, even, even for Laker players playing in the Max Zeal Stadium, it's still a different atmosphere knowing what's at stake and knowing the ramifications of each game and every possession. Absolutely. And uh, you talk about veteranship status. New Paltz also has that veteranship status. They got Rylan Blondo, two-time All-Suniac team guard. And I actually got to sit down with him in an exclusive interview earlier today to kind of talk about the leadership that he brings to his team with his veteran status. But we'll have to wait till after the break to take a look at that interview. It's coming up right after the break on WTOP 10. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Welcome back to WTOP 10 as the number two Hawks look to steer clear of being scorched by the number six ranked Red Dragons of Cortland. I am Matt Shermita, joined by Jason Samzel and Nick Mason. And guys, 
Before the break, we talked a little bit about how Oneana has some guys in this year's tournament that weren't allowed around last year or years prior, kind of a new group. But for New Paltz, they have some true veteranship in Ryland Blondo, who's been here for the last three years in the playoffs in Oswego, and he, uh, he's been serving as a leader along the way, Nick, kind of like President Richard Nixon out there on the court. Yeah, it's really, it just gives you a different mindset. You're, you have the familiarity I'm sorry. Uh, you're, you're familiar with the playoff setting, and that's just a whole, that gives you a whole different kind of advantage in the playoffs, especially when you're familiar with the Oswego uh, basketball gym facilities. I mean, just knowing your environment it can also be beneficial for this Oneana versus New Pulse game for New Pulse. I mean, that's a great point. He knows this environment. He knows what the playoff implications are, and he knows how this atmosphere can get. And this afternoon, I got a chance to sit down with Blondo, and he kind of touched on all these things, the leadership, the veteranship, and just the hunger that this team has with not being able to take it home the last couple years. Let's take a look at that interview. The season has faced a lot of adversity, um, ups and downs, tired programs, win record, just a lot of wins, good moments, bad moments, and we faced a lot of experience that we learned from and brought the team together and we just, just the first team that I felt like we were the most together and just every day we just learn, keep getting better. And I would never want to go with a to battle with another group of guys besides this team. We really like the line, the I will outwork anyone that you put in the personal information. How does that mentality apply to this weekend for you? Um, definitely just having a mindset that I've worked hard at anyone on the court and that if anyone earns it, it's me from all these years of hard work and just the confidence from uh, repetition and preparation and just going into tonight's game and all the years, five years to this point, all the work that comes, I got a lot of confidence that we can take it, take it home this year. Got you. And you talk about that hard work. It's certainly paid off. Two-time All-Suniac team. It kind of puts you in a leadership position with the squad that you've built behind you. Um, what kind of advice and guidance are you giving to some of the newer faces that haven't gotten that playoff experience that you have? Um, definitely every play. Every play matters. Every second matters. You can't take any plays off during this time because at the end of the game, every possession is going to count throughout. Everything adds up. So just taking, taking it game by game, play by play, minute by minute, and just experiencing it and just enjoying every second of it, honestly. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to add ahead of this weekend's matchup uh, that I didn't ask you? Um, we're ready for whoever plays, whoever we get to play in the semis and in the finals. Um, I mean, we got a good team and we're ready to take on whoever. Gotcha. I mean, we're looking forward to seeing you out on the court, uh, wishing you some success. Uh, good luck this weekend and we appreciate your time interviewing with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, and Blondo has had just kind of this immense impact on the team. He leads the team in nearly every big stat. We'll look at that impact that he has. And he talks about not being outworked, and he sure reflects that in his play and his hunger to succeed. And he also talks about that every play matters mentality, especially in the postseason. Talk to you about the importance of that mentality and just being that driven to win these games, Jason. No, great interview by you. And uh, again, he just said, as, as Blando said, he will work out, outwork anybody on the court. And it's absolutely evident by the way he plays. You can see, you know, he can jump uh, through the roof, grabbing, he, you know, leads the team in rebounds, and also is just quick, so crafty, so versatile, a leading team in steals per game. He's just a great factor for this, uh, for this New Paltz team and just an incredible worker, hard worker, great scorer, can just really do it all and is everywhere on the court for this team when they need him. Absolutely, Nick, I want to get a quick thought too here. You see the second on points per game, but first in rebounds, first in steals per game. Talk to me about how he's able to do it on both sides of the floor and that, what that brings to this new Paltz team. Rebounds is an amazing category to lead the team in, but when you're a guard, you do not see this almost ever, the guard leading the team in rebounds. He's only six foot, which uh, not only six foot, but when he has teammates who are also six six, you would expect maybe the bigger guys to get the rebounds. That's typically this guy has the hustle and the just the mindset to get rebounds. I mean, you have to work hard if you're going to be at a half a foot disadvantage and still lead the team in rebounds. Talk about a player who plays his heart out on the court. Absolutely. I mean, you talk about you know that hustle that he has, and he shows that in that um, you know I deserve it all mentality and not being outworked that he talks about. But Blondo, he's not the only player that stepped up and has left an impact on their programs and certainly won't leave an impact on this year's playoff tournament. So I asked Jason, 
Who is your early playoff playmakers that we should look for this weekend? Yeah, guys, I mean, listen, we talk about scoring, that's great, but when you get into the postseason, you, got, you need experience. You need guys with experience who can tell, who can get you the ball and create scoring opportunities, and that's why my playmaker, uh, senior guard Sean St. Lucia, just a great veteran presence on this new Pulse team. Every season he's been on the Hawks roster, he's led the team in assists, including this year, fourth in the Suniac in assists. This kid can drop dimes and is versatile, scoring a season-high 21 points in their last game against New Pulse. Nick, how about you, real quick? This one's going to be for Oswego. I don't know if you've heard of him, but Jeremiah Sparks, he's been here for a couple of years. Actually, this is fourth season. If you're from Oswego, you know his name because he leads the SUNYAC in points per game. And very impressive. I think he might actually be the best player in the SUNYAC, but that's just my opinion. He also leads, or I'm sorry, he doesn't lead, but he's third in the SUNYAC in free throw attempts. Why does this matter? This matters because if a player knows how to draw fouls, you're basically generating extra points for your team. That's not something that all players know how to do. So that's something that I was impressed by in Jeremiah's game. And he also is good on the defensive side, ninth in the SUNYAC in steals. When you can play both sides of the ball, and you can also generate fouls. That just shows your basketball IQ and talent all tied together. This is Jeremiah Sparks, uh, and that's why he's going to be the player to watch for the later games. I think both are great picks. I mean, I've seen them both in action. St. Lucia kind of shot the lights out of the gym, and Jeremiah has been great all season. But when we come back, we're going to go over to Zip to the Zeal, where we'll see Kenny Gerard and Zach Malamud coming up right after the break. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. We're on that Look that at the boy. bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond test drop? Yeah, that's getting bad. <laughs> yep. Ten out of ten recommend on Yelp. I'm buzzed. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Nope. Kevin. I told you earlier to expect the unexpected here on Gold Rush Weekend. And who would have expected that Kenny Gerard is doing the play-by-play -play today, not really a play-by-play -play guy. We're going to go over to the Max Zeal Gymnasium where Kenny Gerard is there with Zach Malamud. Guys, take it away. Welcome into the Max Zeal Gymnasium where we are getting ready about 10 minutes out from SUNYAC semifinals returning into the Max Zeal Gymnasium. I'm Kenny Gerard, coincided by Zach Malamud. And Zach, I know you're as excited as I am. Playoff basketball is back. It is back, and it's back at Max Zeal Gym. I mean, the Lakers have done it the last couple of years it's been here, so very excited. Four really great teams here. I'm pretty hyped up, too, as well. And New Paltz, a familiar foe. They've been here a few times. Now their third year straight in the Suniac semis. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first three times, it's, uh, of course, all three of these times, they've run into a team in Oswego, and that's not help them when, they, when they've when they gotten there. So um, hopefully they don't have to run into us, we go. I think they're hoping that, but they got to focus on this Oneana team today. They're one and one versus them in the season series. So it should be a really tough matchup for both sides trying to get ahead of the other. 
Yeah, very, very evenly matched up teams, and you wouldn't think it by the seeding. The number two seed against the number six seed, usually it's a vastly different matchup, but these teams very, very well matched, and as you said, both losses in the last few years coming to the way of the Oswego State Lakers. Well, now they got to get through Oneana to make their way into the final. A tough matchup ahead for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Oneana now, they're coming in where last year it was not the finish that they wanted. They got knocked out early by this New Paltz team. Maybe a bit of a chip on their shoulder trying to defeat the team that knocked them out last year. A lot of new faces for this Oneana Red Dragons team, but they are very, very talented. Of course, the upset against Brockport in the last round. They're coming in with a, a chip on their shoulder. Like I said, they need to start strong to beat this New Paltz team. Absolutely, and Oneana, again, another familiar face has been here in the Zeal a few times, their third straight SUNYAC playoff appearance. And Zach, what do you think they do? They need to do now to finally get over the hump? I think just starting early. I think, I mean, if they get ahead of the game, Oneana's pretty good defensively. If New Paltz gets ahead of the game, they can really cause a lot of trouble. They have a lot of experience on their roster now. Yeah, a very experienced team, just looking to get over the hump against New Paltz. Both teams, we'll see what they got. But we are looking at some uh, a pretty good matchup here. Sparks and Akuri, two excellent players. What do you think, uh, between these two guys, leaders of their teams, what do they each need to do to bring their team to a victory? Yeah, so for the Oswego uh, State Lakers, Jeremiah Sparks, he's been unbelievable this season for Oswego. And he, he's averaging 23 points per game, six rebounds per game against Cortland this season. Just a really talented player overall. Kenny, he has five games where he has 25 plus this season. Just racking up the points, 30 in two of those games. So, I mean, he's a really talented scorer and, and Cortland's gonna need to do a good job stopping him. He's the the spark plug, you could say, for this Oswego State offense. It really all runs through him. On the other side, for Cortland, they got a player of their own in Kendall R. Curry, the buzzer beater the other night. He's got all the attention on him. But he's a really talented player. Uh, I mean, he's been Cortland's rocket, their go-to guy so far this season. He's shooting 50% from the field right now. I mean, a guy that he has size at 6'4", but you wouldn't see him as a traditional big man. He goes up against those bigs down low. I mean, he is a tough, tough matchup for anybody. I think Oswego needs to really focus on him. Cortland got some other guys, but I feel like similar to Sparks, it all runs through our Curry, and he's going to be a... A tough matchup for us we go both teams with excellent players big playmakers and big game changers for sure for both teams that's gonna do it for us for now don't worry hear from us in a little bit when the tip off finally happens but we're gonna go to a quick break we come back some players to watch and some picks for tonight's game and you'll see matt jason and nick again stay tuned here on wtop 10. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roger, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP.
We are chipping away at the clock here as we are minutes away from tip-off for Gold Rush Weekend. One of these teams will be looking to chip away and find some gold, but for the other one, time will soon be running out and they will be moving on to a consolation game. But we'll focus on today right now. First things first, we got to look at some players to watch. Jason Oniana, who are you looking at today? My, my player to watch for the Red Dragon, number 11 sophomore Elijah Castillo. Leads a team in scoring with 14.7 points per game. Last time these two teams squared off, Castillo was dead quiet, held to only two points and shot one of eight from the field. So I expect him to be huge for Oniana if they're able to pull off the upset here tonight. Won't be hard to... Keep your eye on this guy, Xavier Hill, standing at six foot five. <laughs> Last time they played SUNY New Pulse, only about two weeks ago, he scored 31 points. He had 16 rebounds. I don't know about you guys, but those sound like pretty good numbers to me. And there's always two sides to a story, though. On the other side of the ball, we've got SUNY New Pulse. And this guy, A.J. Knight, is who I'm going to mention. Like in medieval times, the Knights would lead their team in a battle. A.J. Knight leads the SUNY New Pulse Hawks in points per game. In the playoffs, points per game is important. He had 17 points versus Oneana two weeks ago, so he's going to be looking to score for the uh, New Pulse Hawks, get them on the board early and often. He can also steal the ball on defense, eighth in the SUNYAC in steals. He's going to be a guy to watch for New Pulse. How about you, Jason? Well, you know, I look at uh, New Pulse. A guy that I'm looking out for is Ryan Blondo. You know, we talked about him earlier. What more can be said about him? He's just been so impressive with his rebounding capabilities. Despite just being t six feet tall, Blondo Rondo's got bunnies pulling down six and a half boards per game. His athletic capability is just incredible. He can jump through the roof, and I expect him to be huge for, uh, for New Paltz here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Nick, Knight, man, it's Knight in shining armor, perfect for Gold Rush Weekend. I know they usually wear silver, not really gold, but I, I digress. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to get into our predictions of today. Jason, what do you got with me? Hit me. I got New Paltz coming in today, and... Winning a close one, 68-62 here tonight. I don't know. New Pulse seems like the obvious pick. I'm not one for an obvious pick. I like Oneana here. 72 to 68. Oneana wins this game. See, I see New Pulse. You know, not much success in the last three years. They come in. They're hungry for that championship. But I don't think it matters. I'm going Oneana, 75, 73. Give me the dark horse. Give me the Cinderella story. My favorite story in all of sports. And it's Oneana pulling it out. But before today's games, you know, a lot of nerves in the locker room. So I'm going to ask you guys, what's going through the mind of the team? What's going through the mind of either of their respective coaches? What's going on in the locker room? Yeah. In, in Oneana, I know, what, I know exactly what the coach <laughs> is saying right now. Like, I, my mind's connected to his. Last year after the loss to New Pulse, he, he was quoted by saying, I didn't do a good enough job coaching this team tonight. So he's going to come prepared, but what he's telling his team in the locker room is play your game. Last year, he also said in an interview after losing, we couldn't make a shot. That was true. They were 16% from the three-point line, 26% from the field. He's telling the team they got to relax. They got to play good basketball. They just got to make shots. They, it's simple. They got to play good basketball because I guarantee he came prepared. He's telling his team that it's their turn to take over and play their game. Uh, and if I'm New Paltz head coach, I'm telling my team, hey, listen, we got to force uh, Cortland to take, uh, or Oneana rather, to take uh, outside shots. They shot terrible last time they faced off against each other, 2 of 20 from the three-point line. So, again, if you can force uh, Oneana to just take uh, three-point shots, if you can force them uh, in taking bad shots, that's going to be key for them to win here tonight. I think those are both great points for Oneana. You know, they didn't really shoot well last year. But, you know, they have Xavier Hill now this year who can work inside, which I think with New Paltz, you want to force that outside shot. you got to kind of close in those lanes, you know, really get an eye on Xavier Hill and space out the floor because Oneana, not a great shooting team. New Paltz, on the other hand, they can extend the floor. They can shoot the three. So I love both of your guys' points. And, you know, just going on in the locker room, I think you guys hit the nail on the head. We hope that um, it's a great game here. I'm very excited. I don't know how you guys feel, but I'm pumped up to see these teams. These two teams play. It's coming up right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Tip-off is coming right up after this. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. The 
kind of late, kind of late, kind of late, the kind of late show with Chloe and Anna. Like licorice, Twizzlers, absolutely nasty. The thought of turkey is just nauseating. Yeah, I, I think can't. you're wrong, is what I think. You think I'm wrong a lot of time. I do think you're wrong a lot. When you look at the number of disasters in the U.S., chances are every area will deal with some kind of emergency in the next decade. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Put the keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call her right home. Told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Welcome back into the Max Zeal Gymnasium for the semifinals of the SUNYAC basketball playoffs. I'm Ken Gerard, coincided by Zach Mahmoud. And Zach, as I said earlier, it's playoff time. It is playoff time. I mean, we have two really, really good teams in this semifinal matchup. New Paltz as well as Oneonta. I mean, uh, the talent that comes here to Max Zeal Gymnasium every single year because uh, Oswego is, is the host for the last three years now. Every single year, the other semifinal game is, is unbelievable. They definitely have a lot of talent, both of these teams. I'm looking for New Paltz. I mean, they got a lot of talent, a lot of experience on their side, whereas Oneana lost a lot of guys from last year's team now into this year's team. Is, is New Paltz going to take that experience, and is it going to hurt Oneana in this game? Well, you never know, because experience is crucial to any team in any sport. But I mean, the Red Dragons coming in with the upset, they got that sixth seed. They were a little bit lower than everybody else, and people overlooked them. They were not looked at as a team that was going to even make it into the semis. More like a play-in round and bounce. And Oneana said, that's not going to happen. And here they are. They're here back in the zeal tonight. And when you look at New Paltz versus Oneana, New Paltz leading in every single category of their main statistics, except for points per game and rebounds per game. And it's, it's very similar. I mean, New Paltz, 75.7 points per game. Oneana, 78.6. A very even matchup here. And I'm just going to throw the question to you, Mud. What do you think now as the underdogs, the Oneana Red Dragons, the number six seed, what do they need to do now to grit their teeth and get this win? So I think their work needs to come defensively. They are, they score more points per game statistically, but I do think New Paltz do not doubt them. They are a really, really good offensive side. They got a lot of scores on their team, some transfers that came in, a lot of experience, like I mentioned a couple of times. So offensively, you cannot underestimate them. For Oneana, the focus needs to be defensively. Stand strong and don't allow those guards from New Paltz, a lot of talented ones, to really get going in this game. I think that's the key for Oneana. And look at the other side now, the number two, New Paltz Hawks, looking to fly away with a victory here. How about they fly not too close to the sun? What do they got to do to not get too ahead of themselves and take down the number six Oneana Red Dragons? So I think getting off to a hot start. They sometimes, they came here in recent years and they struggled a bit to get going early. I think they cannot do that tonight because Oneana is going to put up those points. I do think with New Paltz, they need to score quickly because it's going to set the tempo for the game, show Oneana, okay, yeah, we're the two seed, we're here for for 
a championship in the end. So I think Oni on a or, or New Pulse, excuse me, needs to start hot. And if they do so, it's going to be a long day for the Red Dragons. Well, the Hawks looking to catch some wind under their wings early and take an early lead over the Red Dragons. Well, the Red Dragons looking to claw away early and take down the Hawks. There's one thing that's certain here, Zach. We've got a great matchup coming up here. We definitely do. I mean, two strong teams. They're one and one, like I mentioned before, on the season. So, uh, blows both way. Where will it go today, Kenny? We are about to find off. Is tipped off. Is about to happen for the 2024 SUNYAC men's basketball semifinals. Is here we go. And New Paltz wins the tip. They're going to take it down the court. Looking to make some moves here, St. Lucia. Lucia down to the close, out 15. Looking to drive in, back out to St. Lucia. St. Lucia looking for an open man. Back up to the top of the key, back to the left corner. Back up top, over to Knight. Looking down low, not finding much pull jumper, and it's good! New Pulse with a quick jumper there, starting off hot. Yeah, Kobe Bogart down low. I mean, what a move there. New Paltz getting off to that hot start. Like I mentioned, they really got it going there. Oneonta Brown with the ball now. Looks down low. Hill in the post using his body. No good. Rebound Oneonta. Oneonta looking to make something happen out top now. Three ball on the way. No good. Hill tips it out of bounds, and it's going to stay off of a New Paltz player. Oneonta retains possession. Yeah, and Xavier Hill down low. I talked to you before the game about yeah. Xavier Hill. I mean, the impact that he has down low, a lot of size there, and should be something that New Paltz has to worry about today. Definitely something to worry about. Off in the corner, Red Dragons looking to make something happen here down low. There's, there's Hill down low, and it's blocked, stuffed by the Hawks. Great defensive play early by the Hawks as they take it down. St. Lucia with the ball. Lucia at the top of the key looking to make something happen here. Lucia over to Knight. Knight driving low. And it's taken away by the Red Dragons. Taking it down the court now. Jumper. No good. Rebound. New Paltz by Bogart. Londo with the ball. Sorry, Kenny. No, what you're a, good. What a play a moment ago by Dakota Smith. You talk about the double team coming down on Xavier Hill. It's huge. Absolutely, Zach. A big play. And getting up there. And that... We're going to get an early call going in the favor of the New Paltz Hawks there, Zach. And, I mean, Dakota Smith loved the energy to start this one. Gets the huge block on one end, draws a foul on the other end. New Paltz, the energy is big for them. They're, they're very hyped up to be here. The New Paltz Hawks are looking very hyped up as Blondo to inbound here. Over to Knight. Knight driving down low. Knight layup, and it's good. Knight doing Knight things and taking it right down. The throats of the Red Dragons. The Red Dragons now have control of the ball, taking it down. Wooden with the ball. Dishes it over the top of the key, over to the right side. Castillo dashes it down to Hill. Hill with the pass across. Shot, three. It's good. Red Dragons drain a three. And it's only four to three. Back and forth so far here, Zach. Yeah, and... Oneana, not really a three-point shooting team, only 30% on the season. Get one to go there, maybe gives them some momentum. St. Lucia with the ball, looking to drive down low. Jumper off. Brown with the ball, going to inbound up over to Wooden. Wooden taking it down the court. Wooden looking for the open man, calling for a screen. Not going to get one there. Just is it over. Down low is Hill. Hill using his body to his advantage, driving in. Can't find it, going to dish it out top. The jumper coming away. Oneana, it's good. And just like that, the Red Dragons take a lead, 5-4 to four over the Hawks. Yeah, and the ball movement's been huge for Oneana, getting open looks, and, and they're making them. So New Paltz needs to respond to that, be better on the defensive side. Blondo over to Knight. Knight over to Bogart. Bogart with the ball over to St. Lucia. Back over to Knight, three. It's good. Knight doing Knight things again, and there's the three for New Paul. Seven to five. Hawks take the lead. Oyana driving down low. Over to the right corner again. Wooden looking for something here. This is over to Knox. Back up to Hill. Hill on the top of the key. Hill looking to use his body to his advantage. Three from Hill. 
No good. Rebound Blondo. New Paul taking it down the court. Looking for the open man down low. Layup's coming. No good. Rebound Hill. And he has, Hill's been great as well on the offensive side, but the defense getting the rebounds crucial for the Red Dragons. Yeah, definitely. A, a size impact in the paint, and he's done a good job so far today. Oniana with a quick layup there to tie things up. 7-7. Seven seven. Blondo with the ball, taking it down the court for the Hawks. Blondo dishes up to St. Lucia. St. Lucia looking for something down low, not finding much. It's hit by Oniana, and they're going to get the steal there. Coming over now, Oniana down the court. Wooden with the ball, top of the key. Wooden drives down low, dishes it out. Fakes the three, drives in, back out to Wooden. Wooden moves it back over, drives down low. And a foul coming the way for Brown. Yeah, and, and Dakota Smith caught in the restricted area there, so it is a defensive foul, blocking foul on Smith. But I think the biggest thing for Oneana right now is on the defensive side, they're leaving A.J. Knight a little bit too wide open. I mean, he's one of the best players in the SUNYAC this year, leading New Paltz in points per game with 12.9. I mean, you cannot let him get an open shot. No, A.J. Knight, definitely not the player to leave open. 12.9 points per game, 43 pointers on the year. And now, well, now 41. He's got an extra one tonight. But A.J. Knight, not the player you want to leave open if you're the Oneana Red Dragons. I think the biggest thing for New Paltz is continuing that hot start. A couple of empty possessions, but continue to do work on the defensive side. There was a couple open looks for Oneana. Just patch that up. These teams are not known for their defensive work, but I think they need to step it up today because they, I don't know if either can win in a real shootout. No, and Blondo with the ball, layup, it's good. Little fancy work there by Blondo to take the lead. Nine to eight, Oneana now with the ball, taking it down the court. Wooden with the ball, looking to make something happen here, dishes it around, top of the key, three. No good, rebound, Red Dragons up with the second chance points and there it is. Brown with the second chance points for the Oneana Red Dragons. It's Blondo now with the ball for the Hawks. Blondo over to Knight. Knight over to Bogart. Bogart looking around, back over to Knight. Knight, three. And there it is, Zach, exactly what we were just talking about. Can't leave him open on those three-pointers. Yeah, I mean, what a player A.J. Knight is. He started off red hot, eight of New Paltz's 12 here. And I mean, Oneana need an answer on the defensive side. Oneana looking to have to contain Knight now to try and make their way back into as they're driving low. Jumper coming over behind the backboard. No good. Rebound Hill poked away. And it looks like it's going to stay in the Red Dragon possession. Yeah, it just shows the hassle that they cause in uh, on the offensive glass, excuse me, for Oneana. They've just been really taken over down low. Xavier Hill, Caleb Brown, both down there. It's a team that they have 10.0 in the rebound margin, plus 10. So, I mean, they are a dangerous team. And there's Hill again with the layup down in the post doing his job, exactly what he's done all year long, gets the points for the Red Dragons. It's now Knight's going to take it down for the Hawks. Knight dishes it over. Blondo back to Knight. Knight over to St. Lucia. Lucia over to Bogart. Bogart over by the charity stripe. Spin, jumper, shot. It's good! Bogart with the two-point jumper for the Hawks to take the lead 14-12. Red Dragons now Wooden taking it down for Oneonta. Oneonta struggling on the top of the key over to Brown. Brown down to Knox. Knox driving down low. Knox layup. No good. Rebound goes to the Hawks. Blondo taking it down now for the Hawks. Down low. Tipped off of the New Paltz Hawks and it's going. Oneonta ball. Yeah, good defense. Transition defense by Oneonta there, but they keep allowing open shots or not, not highly contested shots for New Paltz here. So they need to pick things up on the defensive side and that will give them a bit of an edge in the game. And we're going to get a quick stoppage here. Not exactly sure what happened there, Zach, but something happened. I think we got some blood on the floor, so uh, ah. these teams will probably go back to the bench for a little bit. Well, we've seen just about seven minutes of action here in the Zeal. 14-12, to 12, New Paltz in the lead, 13-25 to go. Zach, now if you're Oneana as a sixth seed, we said earlier, the underdogs clearly here. What are they doing right right now to keep themselves in contention with the Hawks? Yeah, I mean, it, it's just... It's a, it's a good start for Oneana, but they cannot allow those open shots to keep going in. I think 
guarding a guy like A.J. Knight, not giving him any room is, is the biggest key right now. Uh, but the work on the defensive side will come. I think rebounding is a huge thing for Oneana. Offensive glass, they've killed it so far, and they've been really strong in the paint. So continuing to get those numbers up in the paint is going to be huge for the Red Dragons. On the other side, I would think for New Paltz, it's continue to do what you're doing, but pick things up defensively. I think defense is the story of this game. If one team focuses on defense, the other one doesn't, I think that team's coming out with a win. So they really need to pick things up. New Paltz, focus on rebounding. Box out, very strong down there. They are they are a hassle down there, Oneana in the paint. So it's going to be a tough one to deal with for New Paltz, but you wouldn't put it past them. No, definitely not. When you got a guy like Hill down low for Oneana, you got – he got a good shot again in almost every single rebound on offense and defense, and Hill so far doing a great job of that. And you look at New Paltz now, he gives AJ Knight the ball eight points here early. If they continue to feed him, if Oneana continues to let him get the opportunities, the easy shots, and those wide open threes, they could run away with it. Yeah, it's interesting. New Paltz going a bit small here. Their lineup in general is just a bit small. So you see the oversize that Oneana will bring into this game. So need to pick things up defensively. Absolutely. He's now only on inbounds the ball. Jumper on the way. No good. Rebound Blondo. Blondo taking it down now for the Hawks. Blondo, right side of the three, up to Knight. Knight finds St. Lucia. Lucia's going to take it back to Blondo. Blondo over to St. Lucia. Lucia down low. Bogart. Bogart using his body. Shot. No good. Rebound. Goes to New Pulse. Back up to St. Lucia over to Knight. Down low again for Blondo. Blondos. We're going to get a foul there on the floor. Looks like it's on Oneonta. Yeah, and Oneonta just a bit caught out there defensively and, and forced to foul there. Not great for them. Well, Zach, we're not the only one here with a microphone. We also have the man bun, Jake Bradley, down the sideline. Jake, take it away. Thanks, guys. Caleb Brown, somebody I want to keep my eye on. You see him kind of on the near side of your screen right now. He is an absolute playmaker. Just saw him with a great lead pass a couple plays ago, and then he's very strong finishing in the rim right now. Expect the ball, ball to go through him, and if the, Oneana can utilize him and New Paltz can kind of stop Caleb Brown, I got to think this one's swinging the way. New Paltz, guys, back to you. Thank you, Jacob Bradley. He only not knows puck, but he also knows ball as well as New Paltz gets the layup there. Wooden taking it down now for the Red Dragons. Slowing things down for his team. Let the play get into motion for the Red Dragons. Wooden looking for an open man. Wooden drives down low. Shot. It's good. Quick floater there for Wooden. Brings it down 18 to 14 now with Knight with the ball for the Hawks. Blondo with the ball now back over to Knight. Down over to Bogart, straight back to Knight. Knight dishing it around there. Down low, here comes Blondo, and there it is! Beautiful layup there for the Hawks. As here comes a quick transition by the Red Dragons. Euro step layup is good for the Red Dragons. Quick action back to back to back here, Zach. We're trading blows here at Zeal. I mean, Ryan Blondo has gotten going. Six points now for New Paltz. Just secondary scoring behind A.J. Knight. I mean, they got a lot of scores, so New Paltz is stepping up. New Paltz indeed stepping up as Bogart looks down low for Knight. Knight back over to Blondo. Three on the way. It's good! The other St. Lucia can shoot as well, Zach. Yeah, just perfect ball movement there by New Paltz. Blondo with the extra pass after Knight got caught in the paint. St. Lucia, the shooter from the corner. I mean, a seven-point lead now. I told you the offense can definitely not be underestimated by New Plus. A lot of talent on this roster, a lot of experience, and they're showing out so far today. You can't overlook neither Sean or Ethan St. Lucia, both out of Niskayuna, New York at Niskayuna High School, have been excellent so far in only getting the assists, the rebounds, but most importantly, the points out. And Wooden now with the ball inbound for the Red Dragons. Wooden taking it down the court here. Wooden looking to make a play happen here. Dishes it over. Trips and falls over the half court line, and we're going to get the backcourt violation there. New Paltz going to get the ball back. Yeah, I mean, New Paltz on a bit of a run here, and obviously the defensive work has helped them out from that. Oneyana, just get back to the basics now. Try and stop this run. 
limit New Paltz getting on the board a lot from the offensive end. I talked about this Oneana team focusing defensively. They haven't been that great this year defensively. Something they need to really focus on if they want to get the victory. Absolutely, Zach. Blondo with the ball now dishing it around. Back to Blondo. Blondo with the ball three. It's good! Little rattle in for the Hawks. Three pointer, good for New Paltz. Oneana now with the ball. Wooden slows the play down again, trying to get back to the basic, as you said, Zach. As here we got the dish around. Fakes him out. Good little play there. Drives down low. Looks for the open man. Brown using his body, no good. Oneana still with the ball, some chaos down low. And it's finally stolen by the Hawks. Here comes Blondo. Fast break on the way, slows it down. Top of the key, St. Lucia. Lucia back to Blondo. Blondo drives down low, layup. And that's going to be a foul on the Red Dragons. Two on the way for Blondo. Yeah, and, New and Oneana, excuse me, trying to figure things out defensively. They put pressure on one guy, and it's just not working because there's another guy wide open. And look at the replay there of the foul. Pretty clear cut there, Zach. I think I call every time. Might have heard the slap from up here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Blondo with a good drive to the rim. He knew he was going to get contact there, so a good play there by Blondo. And Blondo's first free throw is good. Those charity stripe shots that we've said all season long, Zach, very crucial for any team to get. Yeah, I mean, especially in postseason games, you've got to make your free throws. And, I mean, there's a lot of good shooters on this New Paltz team, so I wouldn't be too worried if I were them when it comes to the strike. Definitely not, as here comes Wooden down now for the Red Dragons. Doing a good job of commanding the court and slowing things down, allowing the play to actually happen instead of rushing it for the Red Dragons. Dishing it around again is the Red Dragons. And we're going to get a call here, stoppage of play once again. Oneonta to inbound the ball. Castillo. And it won't be Castillo. No, nope, we're going to switch it up. It's going to be Wooden now inbound the ball instead of Castillo. I was going to say, so the high tempo that New Paul's on wants to play, that does not favor Oneonta. They need to slow the tempo and get things going. You see trip up there. Three on the way. Bounce around. No good. Blondo with the rebound. Blondo taking it down now for the Hawks. And there's going to be a foul against the Red Dragons. And the Red Dragon sloppy play continues, Zach. And that's exactly what I was talking about right there. The high tempo and fast tempo offense for New Paltz. It, it's not going to favor Oneana. They need to figure things out offensively and not force themselves to have to get back quickly on the defensive side. It's like it's not your first day, Zach. Sounds like you know what you're talking about here. <laughs> St. Lucia dishes it over to Blondo. Blondo top of the key, over. Blondo again with the ball over to St. Lucia, down low. Here comes a layup for the Hawks, and it's good! Krupinski, reverse layup for the Hawks, as Oneonta now Wooden with the ball. Wooden dishing it around for the Red Dragons. Back over to the top of the key. Castillo back over, three-pointer on the way. No good, rebound goes out of bounds. It's going to be off the Hawks, and Oneonta ball. A great cut on the other end by Krupinski, and a great pass there by Benesi. It's just really taking up space there and it, it's definitely helped New Paltz today. Lately dishes it down low over the top. Wooden top of the key, shot three. No good, bounces off the rim, rebound Blondo. Blondo taking it down the court for the Hawks. Drives down low, gets stopped by the big body, back to the top of the key, St. Lucia, St. Lucia drives down low. Back over to Blondo, Blondo fakes the three, drives down low, Blondo, it's good. New Paltz on a run here. 32-16 Hawks. They're running away with it here, Zach. And it's all Ryland Blondo. You, know, you see the impact. The bench loves it. I mean, they got the energy. All they need here at Max Hill. But Blondo leading the way. 13 points. He's been great from three. He's been great inside. Just smart decisions by New Paltz. Get their scores in open areas. I mean, that's been the story today. They've got a lot of wide open looks. Just easy shots that New Paltz, you wouldn't put it past them to put it down. No, definitely not. And like we said, New Paltz has a lot of playmakers. You can see Lucia, Bogart, Knight, Blondo, the other St. Lucia, Kropinski. They've got a lot of players for New Paltz. It, it's, they can dish it around. They have a lot of people they can get the ball to. Is New Paltz now on a 12-0 run here in the last two minutes, 30. A 20-4 run in the last 4.56. Zach, what does Oneana got to do now to turn things around? 
Oneana, they need to focus on getting things going offensively, and then it'll make things a lot easier defensively. You're not forced to rush back on defense. I mean, New Paltz, yes, they're going to want to play quickly, but if you hit a shot, they still got to inbound it. So it's going to slow the tempo just a tiny bit. I think for Oneana, focusing on that offense and, and making this game a little bit slower tempo is going to definitely favor them. Well, I'd love some more in-depth analysis, Zach. So we're going to send it down now to Man Bun Bradley. Jacob Bradley, take it away. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Zach. You want to talk about a runaway train since the last time you heard from me. It was 16 all apiece the last time. Oneana now, they find themselves down by the exact score they currently have. Oni or New Paltz doubling Oneana. It's been the Ryland Blondo show over the last, like, five minutes of this one. An absolute... Just one side of the fair. We'll have to see if Oneana can get back into this one. Kenny, Zach, back to you. Thank you, Jacob Bradley. Wise words again from WTOP 10's finest. As we're getting underway again, Oneana now with the ball. Top for Wooden. Wooden calling out the play here, looking to make something happen. Castillo with the ball. Castillo drives down low, stops the free throw line, back over to Wooden. Wooden down low over to Hill. Hill with the ball, and he's going to get fouled. Looks like we're going to get a reach-in foul inbound for the Red Dragons. Yeah, I think uh, moving the ball a little bit quicker will help Oneana here. They had Hill down low, but New Paltz has done a good job of, of trying to stop him. They send the double team towards him, and it, it's definitely made things difficult. Definitely have the double man Hill as Hill comes down low. The layup is good. Hill using the big body to his advantage to cut the lead down 32 to 18. Wando now control with the ball for New Paltz taking it down. Over to St. Lucia, back over to Blondo. Blondo with the ball again, St. Lucia down low. This is a three pointer on the way. It's good! The other St. Lucia gets the three. Ethan St. Lucia, another three pointer tonight. As Wooden with the ball for the Red Dragons. Wooden looking to make something happen here, dishing it around. Castillo with the ball. Castillo drives down low. Layup is good. Castillo, great play by the Red Dragons there. And St. Lucia takes it down for the Hawks. St. Lucia over to Blondo. Back to St. Lucia. Back to Blondo. Drives down low, and there's going to be a foul there against Krupinski. Not against Krupinski, but towards Krupinski. Yeah, definitely. Just kind of beat the defender to the spot there and, and Krupinski draws the foul. The biggest thing for New Paltz right now is three pointers are absolutely flying in. They're five for six, Kenny, to start this game. They cannot miss from deep. No, they cannot. It's St. Lucia now top of the key with the ball. Drives. Back over to the other St. Lucia. Ethan drives. Shot. It's good! And one Ethan St. Lucia for the New Paltz off. And well, Zach, New Paltz, they're on a run and when you're hot, you're hot. They definitely are, and Oneana is struggling on the defensive side to keep up with New Paltz. Fast players, they got a lot of speed on this roster, so Oneana trying to keep up with them. It's, it's been difficult, but New Paltz on the offensive end just look absolutely fantastic to start this one. Ethan St. Lucia putting on a good show so far for him. St. Lucia with eight points so far, two for two from the three-point line, and he misses the free throw. No three-point play there for the Hawks. Wooden now with the ball for the Red Dragons. Wooden looking around for something here. Dishes it back over. Down low to Hill. Hill drives, looks at the ball stolen. Messy sloppy play down low and New Paul steals the ball away. Here comes Knight. Knight over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia three. He's three for three from downtown jam. And there you go and the Hawks are flying, Zach. They are flying. What a start to this one. They're shooting over 75% from the field. They are now six for seven from three. I mean, it's just been lights out to start this one offensively for the Hawks. And for Oneana, you just got to try and keep up now. It's difficult. They're only shooting one for seven from three. The Red Dragons got to get things going there in bunches. They got to go on a run and get this game close again because New Paltz is completely taken over on the offensive end. And New Paltz, 13 points for Blondo, 8 for Knight, 11 for Ethan St. Lucia, and 4 for Krupinski. And don't get it wrong now, Sean St. Lucia, 4 assists, dishing the ball around, making plays happen. New Paltz looking like a well-oiled machine on offense. 
while Oneana now, they were close to start off, is now falling back a lot here. 5 0 run in the last 50 seconds, 20 to 4 in the last 5 13. New Paul's looking great, but for some more in depth analysis, let's send it down to Jacob Bradley. Jake, take it away. Thanks, guys. You could sense the frustration on that last one from Oneana. It almost felt very apropos how it gets stripped of the ball on one side, comes right down in an immediate three. But I'm kind of in no man's land here in the middle. I got New Paltz fans to my right. I got Oneana fans to my left. Half the gym's going crazy. The other half has kind of their, their palm in the... The problem to their heads right now, wondering what might go wrong. A lot of time, though, left, and you can see there in just the huddle that's going on. You know they're talking some strategy, how they can get back into this. This is a team that competed with Oswego, as we know, one of the top teams in the nation. So this one, far from over. Zach Kenny, back to you. Thank you, Jake Bradley. As we've now finally found you in the arena. We were looking for him for a little bit, sitting yeah. across from us. I didn't see him for a while. <laughs> we did find him there. I mean, he's, he's hanging out in the stands. He gets the views of both benches. A good spot right there. Good front row seat there for Jacob Bradley with a great analysis again as Wooden. Taking it down now for Oniana. Fishing it around again, up to the top of the key. Back around. Right corner, looking for the three, doesn't take it. Drives down low. Wooden again, dishing it back out to the top. Drives, no one there, nobody home. That ball is going to roll out of bounds. New Paltz ball. And we've said this again so far, Oneana offensively looking very sloppy while New Paltz's defense has been locked down. Yeah, and their fifth turnover now for Oneana. And that's just feeding into this New Paltz run, giving them confidence. They, they can do whatever they want on the offensive end. They've got a 20-point lead. They're feeling comfortable. They're going to keep it going. So Oneana definitely needs to stand strong here right before half. New Paltz feeling comfortable with 6.15 left to go as Knight drives down St. Lucia. Steps out of bounds, going the way of Oneonta now. Oneonta inbound the ball. Lately inbounds it in to Wooden. Wooden taking it down the court now for Oneonta. Wooden drives down low, still top of the key, looking to make something happen here, looking for the open man. Back over to Laidley. Lately over to Castillo. Castillo drives up to the top. Back over to Wooden. Wooden three. No good. Rebound Red Dragons. And the putback jumper is good. Laidley gets a second chance opportunity there for the Red Dragons. And St. Lucia now taking it down for the Hawks. St. Lucia drives down low. Dishes it out to Knight. Knight back to St. Lucia. Bogart with the ball now. Back over to Londo. Blondo drives, no good, second chance, no good, rebound. Oneonta Wooden with the ball. Wooden top of the key, drives, stops there. Points for an open man, looks for a play. Back around again for the Red Dragons. Knox with the ball in hand, Knox drives down low, Knox layup, no good, goes with own rebound, no good, Bogart gets the board. St. Lucia now driving it down for the Hawks. St. Lucia back to Bogart. Bogart looking to drive down low. Back up to Blondo. 4.51 left to go. Bogart with the ball. Bogart drives. No good. Rebound to the Red Dragons. Wooden with the ball. Wooden drives. Wooden layup. No good. Rebound to the Red Dragons. We're going to get a foul on the floor here. Not sure who it's going to go on. Yeah, me either. I'm wondering the same thing. I believe it's going on New Paltz. I think and so. And it's going to be baseline out of bounds for Oneana. But, yep. I mean, the work on the defensive side has been good in this last stretcher. Two, about two minutes for Oneana. They need to convert that in the off on the offensive end. They got an offensive rebound a moment ago. Continue to go to your strengths. Offensive rebounding is definitely one of them for Oneana. New Paltz scores in the last two minutes and 22 seconds here as Wooden now with the ball for Oneonta. Wooden drives, dish. Castillo with the ball. Castillo drives down low, gets stopped, almost stolen away. Hill with the ball, back over around corner three. No good, rebound. Over the back, foul, and it's going to the New Paltz Hawks. Yeah, it's just been a rough start on the offensive end when it comes to three-point land. Only one for eight, the Red Dragons are. They need to get those three-pointers going if they want to get any chance back into this game because it's it's definitely hurting them. They forced a foul there. You send New Paltz to the line. 
And St. Lucia now with the one-on-one -on -one free throws for the Hawks. And a costly mistake, as you said, for the Red Dragons as they are down 18 points here with 419 left to go in the first half. You really just don't want to commit those fouls. Those, those silly mistakes are what they're going to cost you when you're already down so much. You can't afford to send them to the charity stripe and allow easy points to go on the board. Definitely. And, I mean, Cameron Conover has been in this situation before. He'll probably figure something out for them. Uh, I mean, he's been in the situation, like I said, he, he's been in a championship game for the Suniac. He's been in semifinal games. And he's played this New Paltz team. They're pretty close to each other. So he's played this New Paltz team a bunch of times. So I, I think he'll come up with a game plan here. But like I said, it, it starts defensively. And they've kind of figured a little bit out towards the end of this half. But it, you need to translate that into points on the other end. Get it to the bigs down low. You're definitely the bigger team, you would say, of the two. So get it down to Hill. And your offense can work through the big man down low, whether he chooses to pass it, gets an open shooter in good areas. I think going through a hill is the key on the offensive end. Yeah, and as you said earlier, it's a battle of the defenses now as both teams scoreless in the last minute 30. New Paltz, two minutes and 40 since we've last seen a field goal for them. But Oneonta, their real big struggle right now, Zach, one for nine from behind the arc. Yeah, it's just not been a good start for Oneonta. Trying to get those shots to go, they'll fall eventually, but I mean... It, you can't wait that long because, of course, they're down 18 points. So get things going down low, and maybe it will lead to some more open looks for them. They've had those open looks, just haven't been able to knock them down from deep. Maybe get those mid-range going as well as Hill down low. And it should be a, a good comeback for Oneana if they're able to get those things going. Absolutely. As now we are going to see the one-on-one -on -one free throw for the new Paul Tah coming the way of Sean St. Lucia. St. Lucia hits the first one, so he'll get the second one. And he hits the second one, two for two from the free throw line, breaking the scoreless streak. Oneonta now with the ball. Castillo. Back over to Wooden. Look down low for Hill, taken away by the Hawks. Hogarth back over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia with the ball, top of the key, calling the play for the Hawks. Blondo drives down low, nope. Not gonna find him there, Is there's Knight. And no good there for Knight. A rarely missed three for Knight. Good defense so far by Oneonta, as you said, Zach. Maybe starting to figure it out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's good pressure on Knight there. Get in front of those open shooters. Don't give them an easy look. And then it'll allow you to run your offense on the other end. Wooden with the ball. Oneonta looking to make something happen here with 3.33 and ticking on the clock. Hartz over to Castillo. Back over to Hartz. Hartz drives. Layup. And they're going to get him with that one. The arm was extended. And you're going to see that one offensive foul just about every single time there, Zach. Yeah, it's just putting your body on the line. I love the energy from New Balls here. They're just doing everything possible to get an edge in this game. I mean, you, you put your body on the line, your teammates are going to love it. He definitely is right there, Zach. Is now Blondo with the ball, taking it down for the Hawks. Good pick there by Bogart. Blondo still with the ball, drives down low, layup. And he's going to get the foul. Two on the way for Blondo. And Oneana, they're doing better on defense, as we said, but they are still, foul-wise, not doing too hot. Nine fouls so far, while New Paul's only five on their side. Yeah, and Blondo's really a problem on the offensive end. Just a, a difficult player to keep up with. Only shoots 75% from the line this season. But, I mean, he's he's been really, really strong. 47% from the field is what stands out as a guard. That's, that's difficult to do, so... Uh, he's definitely been a, a key so far already with 14 points. Make that 15. I mean, he's been the story for New Pulse. And that makes Blondo 4 for 4 from the charity stripe tonight for the Hawks. As Wooden now with the ball for Oneonta. Over to Castillo. Castillo looking for Hill. Hill with the ball now on top of the key. Hill, good dribble, poked away. Hill still with the ball back to Wooden. Wooden dribbling around, driving. There's going to be an on-the-floor foul there against the Hawks. Wooden now to inbound the ball for the Red Dragons. 
2.50 to go here, 44 for New Paltz, 22 for Oneonta. You're watching the men's Suniac semifinals here on WTOP 10. I'm Kane Gerard, coincided by Zach Malamud. Inbounded there, Castillo drives, take it away, and it was just out of bounds. Oneonta retains possession. Oh, so close there for New Paltz there, Zach. And another hustle play there by Sean St. Lucia. Get dirty, get on the floor, you love it. And, I mean, a 22-point lead, it's all come basically for the defensive side of New Paltz. They've really shut things down for Oneana on the offensive end, and that's led to this big lead. Castillo inbounds it to Brown. Brown drives, and another foul there. It's been a very foul-heavy end to this first half here, Zach. Yeah, just a bit handsy there, and Bogart tried to get in the way. Oneonta needs to take advantage of these opportunities. You've got to hit your free throws here. These are huge to come back into this one. And Brown lines up for the first one from the charity stripe. Missed the first. And smacks it out of bounds, going New Paltz way. Sloppy rebound there for Oneonta with an opportunity. Doesn't work out for them, and New Paltz now trying to capitalize again on the opportunity up 20 points here with 2.40 left to go. 22, my math is not that great, Zach. Double the points, though, on the board for New Paltz. St. Lucia now takes it up the court for New Paltz. St. Lucia looking for something here. 2.28 to go and running. St. Lucia drives, takes it by himself. Didn't need anybody else as Sean St. Lucia takes the easy layup there for the Hawks. Wooden now taking it down for the Red Dragons. Over to Castillo. Castillo, jumper. No good, rebound Blondo. Blondo taking it down now for New Paltz. Blondo looking to make a play behind the back. Here he goes, Lane is all his misses. The layup, rebound there by Hill. Hill now taking it down for the Red Dragons over to Wooden. Wooden dishes it down low to Castillo. Castillo, layup. No good. Rebound St. Lucia. St. Lucia now taking it down for the Hawks. St. Lucia going to slow the play down. Minute 44 left to go here in the zeal for the first half of the game. St. Lucia now drives down low. Dishes it over. Layup is no good. Second chance. No good. Rebound Oneonta. And New Paul, so far, they've been good at taking opportunities of those second chance points. Smith just unable to get those two layups with good pressure from the Red Dragons. Yeah, I mean, good defense by Oneana down low, but I mean, they gave them some open looks. We almost saw an absolutely disgusting move from Ryland Wando. <laughs> Double defenders, goes around, around the back, but could not finish. Was looking for a foul there. But I mean, New Paul is just completely taking control of things through their work on the offensive end with the points, with Blondo, plus their work on the defensive side. And they've been really, really strong down there. A great job passing it around and making things happen for the Hawks, finding those opportunities as Brown's first free throw sinks this time. We'll get the second one now with the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Minute 32 left here, 46 for New Paul's, 23 for the Red Dragons as Brown lines up the cherry stripe for his second free throw. And he sinks both of his free throws. Cut the lead down, 46 to 24. Blondo to inbound now. Back over to Blondo. Blondo taking it down for the Hawks. Blondo back to St. Lucia. St. Lucia calling out the play, looking to get something happen here. St. Lucia around the right side there. Back over to Blondo. Blondo will take it back to the top of the key. Blondo fakes the drive. Back to the three-point line, loses his dribble. Retains his dribble back over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia looking to drive down low. Layup no good. Rebound. Red Dragons. Wooden now with the ball for Oneonta. Wooden taking it down the court. Wooden two team there. No good. And it's stolen away by the Hawks. Here comes Blondo. Blondo drive. Layup. Stuffed. But it's going to be a foul called against the Red Dragons. Two coming for Blondo and Zach. Almost an amazing block there by the Red Dragons. Yeah, it just got caught on the fair on the foul there on the body, and Blondo goes to the line. But the work on the defensive side for New Paltz cannot be underestimated here today. They forced another turnover, now up to eight turnovers for Oneana, and that just leads to fast break points for New Paltz, and they've definitely take advantage of those with the fast tempo that they like to play. And Blondo hits the first of his two free throws here. 51 seconds left to go. Oneonta 
going into the half now, trying to just get some momentum maybe, get a good score here, get a good three, something to give the team a little bit of momentum going into the locker room. As now Wooden with the ball for Oneonta. Time rolling off the clock for the Red Dragons. This is over to Hart. Hart over to Brown. Back up to Hart. Hart, top of the key, drives down low. Hart looks like he's going to be fouled. Is it a jump ball? They're going to get the jump ball. That's just great work defensively again by New Paltz, forcing them into a, a double team there. And, I mean, they it's still only on a possession, 11 on the shot clock, but they need to get a shot up here. 32 seconds left here for the inbound. Hart inbounds it. Over to Brown. Brown. Back over to Hart. Hart jumper. It's good. Beautiful jumper there by Hart. Oneonta, two points on the board for them now as Newpalt. Blondo with the ball. 16 seconds here. It looks like they're just going to try and wind this thing down towards the half. Well, Wooden's got other ideas. He wants to see some plays here. Blondo dishes it over. Stolen away by the Red Dragons. Here they come. Hart loses control. Wooden. No good. Rebound, and it's going to be after the red lights turn on the backboard, and that will be it for the first half. New Paltz looking to fly away with it here after one. 47 for the Hawks, 26 for Oneonta. And, Zach, I'll just give you the basic question. What did you see from both sides that have led to this big deficit in favor of the Hawks? So the, the more energy coming from New Paltz's side, and, uh, I mean, the big work on the defensive side, only 26 points right now for the Red Dragons. Credit to New Paltz there. They made really, really strong defensively. For Oneonta, missed shots plus turnovers, and you're letting New Paltz play their type of game, a fast tempo game, getting out on the fast break, playing fast tempo, and it leads to open looks for this team. So they've done a good job in the later stages Oneonta has of limiting those fast tempo points, but they do need to score a lot on the offensive end to come back in this one. Great analysis there, always, Zach. But we're going to throw it down to Jake Bradley for some more sideline analysis. Jacob Bradley, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, guys. 16 points for Ryland Blondo has been the story of this first half. He's the game-tying score. But I want to talk more than just beyond the points today. What I've noticed from being this close down to the court, Oneana just seems a step just slower than this New Paltz team. They're quick, especially with guys like Blondo and St. Lucia. Those two guys, they're quick guys. You want to make sure you're keeping a step in front of them. And guys like Xavier Hill, Cameron Brown haven't really been able to step up for this Oneonta team. So it's going to be interesting thinking about the second half as to if Oneonta can make the adjustment on what just seems to be a quicker and maybe even more athletic New Paltz team. But you're not going to want to go anywhere because we're going to take a quick break on the other side. Matt, it's Nick, and it's Jason in the intermission report from WTOP 10 Studio. We'll be right back.
What? What's what's going on? Yeah, it's dude. This we go on at like eleven thirty. It's like no. What, what do you mean no? It's ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yeah, it's ten thirty. Maybe it's ten thirty. Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey man. Whoa. You know this book was already discounted ten percent. Wow. Wow. Get a closer for that one. Matthew, look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. We'll deep dive into our feelings and our real talk about you. Stay tuned because it's about to get real. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to Major Discussions. are flying high after this first half. 47 points put up in one half. I know I said at the beginning of the game to expect the unexpected. It's going to kind of be the motto of today because I don't think any one of us were expecting a game so lopsided after the first half. No, absolutely. We saw New Pulse just firing from all cylinders, doing a great job offensively and defensively as well. Uh, just an incredible start for them. Absolutely. Nick? Seeing this in the playoffs is a bit surprising, especially a 20-point deficit. And Oneana already proved they can win in the playoffs. So to see a 20-point just deficit in the first half, very unexpected. Yeah, it's a completely different team that we saw against Brockport. We're going to take a look at uh, the period sum or the halftime summary here. Um, and you'll see some highlights here. What I liked from New Paltz in this first half, Jason, you touched on this in the pregame show. You have to force Oneana to take the outside shot, first possession of the game. That's exactly what you saw. They tried to work it inside, they move outside. Now they're one for nine from the perimeter. Yeah, no, again, I think New Paul's just played into that, played into the weakness of uh, Oneana, a bad outside shooting team. They were able to play into that defensively, force them to take bad shots, and you can see right here, I mean, Oneana just shooting abysmally from the field, 38% uh, from the field, just uh, unbelievable. I mean, especially in the playoffs, you, you'd think they'd, you know, be able to work it inside a lot more, but, it, you know, uh, New Paltz just done a great job defensively forcing the outside shots for Oneana. Yeah, and uh, New Paltz as well, what they've done is off ball movement, it's been unbelievable. I mean, they have eight assists already in this game, and they're shooting very efficiently because of it. I mean, 57% from the field right now, that's not bad, especially considering that they ended the first half one for nine in their last nine shots. So, you know, very efficient shooting, very good ball movement, and a lot of great cuts out there, Nick. That's critical. These teams are doing the exact opposite things. Defensively, SUNY New Pulse is locking down the inside of their zone. They're forcing everything from the outside. Uh, inversely, though, New Pulse, on, when they're on offense, they're able to move the ball, like you said. They're able to get crack inside of that defense, get shots closer to the hoop, and obviously shots closer to the hoop, typically a higher percentage shot. So when you're creating better opportunities for your team, well, that's just going to make your team play better all around and that's something that Oneana needs to figure out in the second half. Yeah, nice, a nice in-game adjustment that we were talking about as the game was going on was New Paltz coach Keith Kenny putting Kobe Bogart on big man Xavier Hill and I think that matchup has just worked wonders for uh, for uh, for the, the Hawks. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> for the Hawks uh, defensively just forcing them uh, to take shots outside. Yeah, it's been a great matchup, and it's caused kind of Xavier Hill to go quiet. But on New Paltz side of things, Rylan Bondo, man, what a game he's having so far. Uh, we're going to take a look at his stats here. 15 points, 7 rebounds in that first half alone. I mean, that doesn't come off and where he's already inching that close to a double-double, guys. 
No, nope. he's, he's a firecracker. And, you know, we've seen that throughout the season. He can score. He can have uh, spurts where he shoots lights out. And uh, we can see here tonight he's stepping up big for his team and just doing an incredible job on both sides of the, of the ball. We know that he, his motto is nobody's going to work harder than him in a basketball game, and he's showing that tonight. Rebounds and points, that's impressive when you can play on both sides of the ball like that. He's helping his team, setting himself up, setting his teammates up, giving the Hawks more opportunities by getting those rebounds. What a great player so far. That's a key contribution or <laughs> contributor of why the New Pulse Hawks are just dominating this game so far. Yeah, we talked earlier today, me and Blondo, and he said he was getting, he was going to get more involved today. He wanted more touches. He was hungry. He only had 10 points last time out against Oneana. Currently, as you see, sitting at 15 in that first half. So big numbers for him. One thing also for New Pulse that's been working really well compared to Oneana is the points from the bench. New Pulse at 15, Oneana at two. Just kind of talk me through how that depth has also helped New Pulse extend their lead to 21 points in this first half alone. Well, yeah, we've seen New Pulse just getting into a rhythm early on. And it doesn't matter whether it's their bench or whether it's the starters out there. They, this team offensively just has a great rhythm, able to work the ball around the perimeter, find great looks uh, from, the, from the field, and just doing an incredible job. And as you said, the depth, that's what's so important for New Pulse. That's what's so important for any team if they want to have playoff success here in the playoffs. How can you expect if your starters aren't doing their job, how do you expect the bench players to come in? I mean, you may look for some life off the bench. That could be something they look for is, okay, these starters are struggling. Maybe some of our bench players who are a little bit fresher can come in, bring some burst and energy, maybe break into that zone and get some better shots. Maybe that's something they look for into the second half, uh, Oneana. But New Pulse has done a good job with their starters and their bench players. Everyone's contributing to this game. Absolutely. We're going to take a deeper look at this bench depth and this bench comparison. And what, who stands out to me right Right now for New Pulse is Ethan St. Lucia. You talk about Gold Rush weekend, man. This guy's pure as gold, three for three from beyond the arc today. No, the St. Lucias are just doing incredible. Both of them, uh, just key contributors for uh, the Hawks this half. 75% from three point range, typically not sustainable, but man, these guys have just been locked in. They just don't want to miss on the New Pulse side. And we mentioned earlier to start the broadcast that the environment since uh, New Paul, specifically uh, Blondo, he's been here before. He's been to Oswego. He knows the environment. It looks like he's playing it like he looks like he's playing like he would at home right now. He's just uh, comfortable with what's going on in the arena. He's comfortable with this game. They just looked more poised than. Uh, New Pulse looks more poised than Oneana. No, that's a good point. point you bring up. I think it's uh, it's absolutely correct. New Pulse, it looks like a home game for them. You know, we saw it from the tip. They just look so comfortable out there. That, you know, there, there was no pressure from them. And, you know, again, it just got them. They were able to go into a rhythm early on and, again, just kept that flow going throughout the game. Yeah, I mean, with New Pulse's comfortability comes Oneana's uncomfortability, and they've been turning the ball over left and right, and New Pulse taking advantage of it. Ten points off turnovers compared to Oneana's three. We'll look at that comparison. They're leading the turnover battle right now, and just it's doing numbers clearly in this first half in terms of putting them ahead in this game. Turnovers is a good way of seeing where the players' minds are at. When you're playing with confidence, when you're playing with uh, comfortability, you're not going to turn the ball over as much. You see the court better. When you get down by this much, especially for Oneana, a team who is underdogs, and your mind and your vision gets clouded, it creates turnovers, and obviously turnovers aren't going to help you win a game. Yeah, and I think New Pulse just did a great job of just disrupting uh, the game plan for Oneana early on. Again, denying the inside for them. Uh, it just, uh, again, that, that's where their offense flows from. It flows from the inside. It flows from the paint. And for uh, New Pulse, again, just to attack the the inside the the inside of the of the you know the the inside all around they just did a, were able to disrupt their offense and again it led to a lot of turnovers yeah absolutely so um you know obviously lopsided first half new Paltz really kind of running some steam here but Oneana they slowed him down kind of towards that last seven minutes with uh, New Paltz ending one for nine we mentioned that earlier what are we expecting moving forward into the second half of play guys. Well, I'm expecting from the second half for Oneana to try to get more shots inside of the paint. They're not, they know that they're not a good three-point shooting team. That's not uh, to discredit any of the players. It's just the way the season's fallen. 
they can't make shots from the three, so they have to get something going inside the paint. And you're going to have to rely on your uh, big guy inside of the paint uh, to get something going for you. Xavier Hill, he's got to get going. He leads the team in three points made on the season, but he's not even doing threes. He's not even getting shots inside the uh, inside the paint either so they get, they just have to figure something out for getting open shots. Yeah that's a big point I think again the efficiency of Xavier Hill is going to be key for the Red Dragons if they want to have a chance at this in the second half but again I think it just it starts from the defensive end they got to have a they got to stand strong defensively against this New Pulse offense it's just a high octane offense that we've seen and again you just gotta again work it around Xavier Hill have him be the center point of the offense and be strong inside. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we'll see what happens. We're going to go zip back to the Max Eel Gymnasium where we got Kenny Gold Rush Gerard over there <laughs> with Zach Malmwood. Guys, take it away for the second half. Welcome back into the Max Eel Gymnasium. We're getting ready for the second half of Suniac men's basketball semifinal game between the New Paltz Hawks and the Oneonta Red Dragons. I'm Kenny Gerard, coincided by Zach Malmwood. And Zach, let's put you in the coach's locker room now. Your Oneonta's coach, you're down by quite a bit here. What do you got to do? Starts defensively. You got to lock down things defensively. And, and because of that, then it will lead to easier opportunities on the offensive end. Credit New Pulse. They've done a good job on the defensive end, really closing down that lane in the paint where Xavier Hill takes up a lot of it. I think Oneana, they need to run their offense through Xavier Hill because, I mean, he can pass, he can shoot, he can do a lot of things down there. Offensive rebounds will come as well. I think it all starts through him. And obviously now if you're the New Paltz Hawks, you're already flying high, you're feeling good. Before we get a tip off here, Zach, what do you got to do now if you're New Paltz to keep the air under your wings? Just keep things going offensively. I mean, you've done a good job in this first half really limiting Oneana's offense. So if you continue that, don't let them get back into this game. Don't let them get close. I think it all starts on defense for really both teams here. The defensive battle up ahead as we are about to get underway with the second half of New Paltz versus Oneonta. You're watching on WTOP 10. St. Lucia now with the ball, driving down low. St. Lucia over to Bogart. Bogart back to Knight. Knight to St. Lucia. St. Lucia down low to Bogart. Bogart drives, spin, layup. No good, and he's going to get the foul going his way. Foul going against Hill, and we said this at the end of the last half, Zach. Oneonta, not, not New Paltz. Foul trouble. Been something for them so far. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's the second on Xavier Hill. That's a big one because New Paltz really trying to expand this lead now. Can't have your big guy in foul trouble. That's not going to help you if you're only on him. Definitely not as Bogart hits the first of his two free throws. Second one about to be on the way for the Hawks. And Bogart two for two there on his free throws. Getting it done to Charity Stripe as Hill inbounds it for the Red Dragons. Down low to Castillo. Castillo. Top of the key, looking for something here, looking for a screen, doesn't get it. Go to Hill. Hill now. Looks down low, shot from Hill. No good, rebound, Bogart. New Paltz with the ball over to St. Lucia. And there's going to be a stop at your plate here. Going out to player down on the floor. New Paltz going to regroup and get the ball inbounded for them. Yeah, I mean, a, a good start to the half for New Pulse. They've kind of just picked up where they've left off. It made things a little bit difficult for Oneana, and Oneana's response to that now is they need to put up points. I mean, they're down 23. You can't you can't win if you don't score, Kenny. So I, you got to put points up on the board to really come back in this one. So I think that's the biggest for Oneana right now. But the, the game plan, like I said, it, it starts defensively if you move things if you get things going offensively, it's going to come from your work on the defensive side. So for New Paltz, they're, they're just going to keep putting up points. They're comfortable with where they're at right now, and they trust their offense, their experience on the offensive end. Oneonta, you need to counter that right now. Yeah, and, you know, now New Paltz, they said they look comfortable right now. A.J. Knight, 3-for-4 three four on his field goals from the night. Ethan St. Lucia, 4-for-4, four four, perfect from the field, and 3-for-3 three three on the three-pointers perfect from the field so New Paltz looking to get it around to a bunch of different guys while Oneonta one for eight for their last eight and one for nine still on the three-pointers not finding much luck for them although defense has tended to get a little bit better now at the end of the first half and now rolling into the second half what do you really have to do now to get over the hump because so far they're underneath a big hump yeah I mean it, it's been a, a weird one so far New Paltz right now have actually missed 
one of their last nine from the field. So, I mean, they're struggling a bit offensively, trying to figure things out. I mean, Oneana is trying to counter it. It's just not working. And all starts with points, Kenny. I mean, well, hey, we could have a close one here. They just got to get things going, Oneana, on the offensive end, especially from three. Only one for nine so far, 11%. So picking that number up definitely will help them. It definitely will, Zach, as Bondo inbounds it now to St. Lucia for New Paltz. New Paltz with the ball, taking it down the court. Behind the back there for St. Lucia. St. Lucia down low, drives, body, layup. No good, rebound goes to the Red Dragons. Brown will dish it over to Hartz. Hartz with the ball. Hartz walking around to the left side there. Castillo back to Brown. Brown looks down low, nothing there. Brown does it himself and drives it in. No good. Rebound Blondo. New Pulse now with the ball. Blondo taking it down the court for the Hawks. Blondo down low. This is around. No look over to St. Lucia. No good from three. Rebound goes to the Red Dragons. Call on the court. Not exactly sure what that one was, Zach, but something. Yeah, reach and foul there. Called on New Pulse. But a couple defensive stops in a row on Oneana. Turn those in on the offensive end now. I'm looking for Elijah Castillo to really get going here. He's been struggling, only four for 11 from the field. He's the leading scorer. They kind of run through him. They do run through Castillo as Hill loses the ball there. Another offensive mistake for the Red Dragons. Not be able to cash in on the offense has been costing them while the defense has started to pick up some of the slack. St. Blondo with the shot, no good. Bogart misses it. Blondo gets his own board. Blondo, ball stolen away. Hill now with the ball for the Red Dragons. Hill taking it down the court. And St. Lucia gets the ball back there. St. Lucia taking it down now for the Hawks. St. Lucia dishes it back out. To the other St. Lucia, Knight with the three. It's good! A.J. Knight gets the three-pointer, and that's the mistake Oneonta had last half, leaving A.J. open for those threes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, they've completely shut down Xavier Hill on the other end. I mean, he's got nothing, only two for six on the day, and they've eliminated his offensive rebounding as well. And New Paltz has done exactly what he needs to do. That's going to bounce off of Blondo. And the Red Dragons will retain possession of the ball here. 52 to 26, 17, 43 to go in the second half. You're watching Suniac men's basketball semifinal here on WTOP 10. I'm Kenny Gerard, coincided by Zach Malmwood. As Hill drives down low and gets the layup. And Hill finally looking alive a little bit there. Gets a good shot for the Red Dragons. As now St. Lucia will take it down for the Hawks. St. Lucia looking to make something happen. Bogart with it at the top of the key. Bogart over to Knight. St. Lucia down to Bogart. Bogart, layup. It's good. The big man gets it done down low for the Hawks. Oneonta now with the ball. Looking to make something happen on offense. Castillo now with the ball. Castillo. Looking to drive down low. Castillo, spin move, layup. It's good. Castillo finally gets to fall. A nasty play there for the Red Dragons. Yeah, what a tough shot there. He had a couple guys around him. Still got it to go. You need a lot more of those if you're only on. It all starts there. It absolutely does, Zach, because you need those plays. And like you said earlier, you can't win a basketball game if you don't score points. So getting those points is crucial for the Red Dragons. They're now down 24 points. The 16-53 left to go. And Oneonta now to inbound the ball. Brown with the ball to inbound. And line up for the inbound here. And watch out for Oneonta. Ryan Tini comes into the game. He's actually their best three-point shooter. They're going to need a lot of them from him. He's 8 for 17 on the season. Hasn't gotten too many attempts, but he's kind of made the most of them. 47% from the three-point line. If he can get open, could be a dangerous weapon for Oneonta. And Tini, this connected New York native out of Gilderland High School. Haven't seen much of him yet, but now on the court, like you said, he's a lethal three-point shooter for the Red Dragons. Maybe he's that missing piece they need to take the lead. If they can get him some open looks, could definitely close the deficit of the 24-point deficit that they are in right now. As Oneonta now inbounds the ball. Castillo with the ball. Castillo over to Tini. Tini with the ball looking for someone open, not finding much. Back over to Brown. Brown over to Castillo. Castillo drives. Stuffed by the two man there. Back out top to Hartz. Hartz with the ball, drives down low, and an easy layup for Hartz. Oneonta's offense starting to finally click for the Red Dragons. Cuts the lead to 22 points. It's Blondo now to inbound for the Hawks. Blondo inbounds to St. Lucia. 
St. Lucia now with the ball, taking up the court, slowing things down for the Hawks. They don't need to get quick pace here. They can waste as much time as they want with the 22-point lead. Over to Bogart. Bogart three. The big man can shoot. The three-pointer for Bogart, extending the lead for the Hawks. Here comes Oneonta down quick. Hearts with the ball. Hearts now looking for an open man over to Castillo. Castillo looking to make something happen here. Castillo dribbling over to Hill. Hill now with the ball. Hill looks to drive, gets stopped. Hill goes the other way. No good for him again. And he gets it stolen by St. Lucia. And here comes the Hawks. St. Lucia smartly slows it down there for the Hawks, not needing to go too quick and waste time. Knight with the ball. Knight drives down low. Knight's layup is good. And here come the Hawks. They are clicking on offense. And we said it was a battle of the defenses. Well, now the offense is at both looking very alive here. 15 30 to go. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you cannot give AJ Knight that much room as Hill finally gets something to go as well. They've kind of shut him down every time he puts the ball on the floor. New Paul says a couple guys around him. The double teams have worked well. It's kind of more about moving the ball around and, and getting that ball movement. That will lead to open shooters for Oneana. I mean, they saw we saw just a moment ago a, a big play by Elijah Castillo. Gets it to Tyler Hartz. He makes one move and he's in around the defender into the lane. Continue to do that. Get the lane's wide open, and that all comes with ball movement. Rather than having Hill down low, he's, he's double teamed. He can't really do much with that. Right, and you said earlier on getting Hill more involved, and especially Castillo. Castillo now the leading scorer for the Red Dragons with 10 points in the night, 5 for 12, with Wooden getting banged up on that play there. He's now but on the bench, and we haven't seen him come back yet. Wooden was the leading scorer with 8 for the Red Dragons. We also see people like Brown with 5, Hill now with 8 points. Getting a little bit of a comeback there for Hill. We saw him a little bit slow to start the game, but now picking it up. I look at the side of New Paul, 16 points now for Blondo, 13 for Knight, 11 for both Bogart and Ethan St. Lucia. The Hawks are clicking. But Oneonta maybe figuring out a little bit here. Yeah, figuring it out a little bit. I think the one thing they need to clean up on the defensive side is guarding the threes because that's been <laughs> the killer for them. Eight of them for New Paul so far today. They're eight for 11 from the field, 72%. That's just not good enough on the defensive end if you're Oneonta. you got to just stop some of those shooters. Eight threes, that's the difference in the game right now, Kenny. Yeah, and you know, it, even the regular season, letting that many threes fly is never going to cut it. But right now, you're in the Suniac semifinal. These are two hard-nosed teams that are playing for a spot in the finals for tomorrow night. And neither of them want to go home early or be stuck into the consolation game tomorrow. So Oneonta really having to grit down now to try and make something happen. As New Pulse now getting ready to inbound it. Blondo with the ball. Blondo over to Ethan St. Lucia. St. Lucia with the ball. Back over to Sean St. Lucia. St. Lucia driving it down the court. Slows it down behind the back. Over to Bogart. Bogart three. No good off the front of the rim. Rebound. Oneonta. Castillo taking it down now for the Red Dragons. Over to Hartz. Hartz finds Teeny. Hartz again with the ball. Hartz looking to drive it down. Hartz gets the layup. And no good to the ball off rebound. And they got the second chance opportunity. No good there. So, so close. Yeah, definitely. A second chance opportunities. And they get one to go there. Now sending them to the line. Yes, and now we're going to take a here. Or take a here. Oh, my God. We're going to listen to Jacob Bradley, our sideline reporter. Jacob, take it away. Thanks, guys, as it's now insanely quiet over here in the, uh, the fan section. I want to talk about Oneonta's approach here. They currently find themselves down 24. I'm curious to see how they start playing, not so much on offense, but on defense. They're starting to do a little bit of a press, but it's only a press on the inbound, and they're kind of laying, letting it lay back a little bit. I'm curious to see if that ramps up as the game goes on. Kenny, Zach, back to you. Thank you very much, Jacob Bradley. Great analysis as always. Getting a good seat in the house there on the other side of the court. As now New Paul's inbound stolen by Wooden, and there he is, he's back! And there's the layup for Wooden, and Oneonta cuts the lead down just a little bit. And bounded now to Blondo. Blondo looking to take it down the court, and he's going to get a reach in foul against Wooden and the Red Dragons. New Paul's, again, as I've been saying a lot, can slow this game down. They don't need to rush. 14.45 to go. They have a huge lead of 21 points, not needing to pick up play. Oneonta, they got to start getting a little bit quicker here. Get on their toes and get it moving with AJ Knight now with the ball. New Paul to the ball over to Blondo. Knight down to Smith. Smith with the ball. The drive down low gets poked away. And another reach in foul 
against the Red Dragon, Zach. Yeah, it's just a little bit too handsy there if you're Oneana. Play smart defense, don't get into foul trouble. You, you got new pulls really where you want them right now. Don't give them any opportunities here. And AJ Knight's jumper is good from the charity stripe. Good shot by Knight, keeping him open, not working for the Red Dragons as Wood now again taking it down the court for the Red Dragons. Wooden with the ball for Oneonta. Wooden looking to get a screen here. This is it down over to Brown. Brown to Teeny. Teeny over to Castillo. Castillo drives. This is it out to Hearts. Hearts three. No good off the top of the backboard. St. Lucia rebound. Knight. Moving it down the court now is the Hawks. And it's stuffed. Hearts with the good block there for Oneonta. They get it down the court. Poked away. And we're going to get another, another foul. Yeah, I mean, a good a good job there by Hearts. They get the miss on one end, but, I mean, great job getting back on defense. He, he stops a bucket there, then get, gets fouled. I mean, that all goes into trying to come back into this one, just big defensive plays like that. And defense wins championships, as the old saying goes, and, well, they got to get to the championship with their defense as Teeny now to inbound the ball for the Red Dragons. Wooden now going to take it over the halfway line for Oneonta. Wooden now setting the play, looking to go, and another call on the court. Plenty of fouls coming in that later half of the first half and into the early goings of the second half here, Zach. We see some frustration here from Coach Keith Kenny. I mean, it's just been a foul battle for the last, like, minute here, Kenny. So uh, just play smart defense here and, and don't give the other team any opportunities. No, he definitely doesn't like what he's seeing as here comes a three from Hearts. It's good. Hearts drains the downtown three. Good for the Red Dragons. As now New Paul's with the ball. St. Lucia to take it down the court for the Hawks. St. Lucia now crossing it over, trying to get it over half court. Over the half court line now is St. Lucia. We're going to make something happen. Dish it over to Smith. Smith now with the ball. Going to find something now. St. Lucia. Dishes it back over to Blondo. And no good for Blondo. Looks for the foul and he doesn't get it. And now Wooden driving down the court fast. Castillo falls, hearts three. No good, and St. Lucia gets the rebound. That's just a killer for Oneana. The three-pointer just has not been falling today. Two for 11 now from deep, and, or two for 12, excuse me. That's just, it's, it's not helping you, and of course a 20-point deficit. You gotta find other ways to get back into this one. And now New Paul's to inbound the ball. In total control here of 20 points, 13.06 to go. 61 for New Paul's, 41 for Oneonta. New Paul's to inbound now. Inbounds it over to Kropinski, over now to St. Lucia. St. Lucia to take it over the half court line. St. Lucia takes it over. And another foul, and it goes against the Hawks. And Brown comes and takes the ball, and it's getting spicy like Cajun chicken in here, Zach. Oh, it is, as uh, St. Lucia could not believe that call. Bit of an arm extension there, and that got the referee to call it. Questionable, but, I mean, rightfully so. The uh, new plots need to be a little bit better when it comes to those fouls. Absolutely needing a little bit more discipline now as Teeny with the ball. Back over to Wooden. Wooden top of the key, looking for Hearts. Hearts now dishes it down low. And that's stuffed out of bounds. Good defense there by the Hawks to not allow an opportunity for Oneonta. It's weird. We've kind of seen a shift in New Paltz as we saw in that first half. A ton of energy from them coming from the bench. They were they were hyped up. They were ready to go. Just haven't gotten going here in the second half. And credit Oneonta kind of shutting things down on defense. And New Paltz there shuts down the inbound pass from Wooden. Excellent defense by the Hawks. They are all they are flying all over the court so far here in the second half, trying to maintain their 20-point lead as Wooden now inbounds it over to Brown. Brown dishes it around. Oneonta now with the ball again in possession. Wooden now at the three-point line. Wooden dribbling around, looking for something. Can't find much. Over to Teeny. Nice save. Keeps it in bounds, but it's stolen by Bolden, and here he comes. And the layup is good. Blondo. Great layup there and a quick fast break for New Paltz. The Hawks are flying. Wooden dishes it down low to Brown. Brown back over. No good. Second chance, no good again. And rebound by A.J. Knight. And the Hawks are in control. Ethan St. Lucia now with the ball. Back over to A.J. Knight. Knight with the ball. Screen from St. Lucia. Doesn't work. St. Lucia now with the ball. Back over to Blondo. 
Wando fakes the drive. Slows it down, dishes it over. Back to Knight. Knight, drive, layup. And he's fouled. Two free throws coming the way for A.J. Knight. A.J. Knight is, is a problem. He really, really is. And, and what a job by New Pulse to grab him from Fredonia, the transfer, of course, who was one of the top players in the Suniac when he was on Fredonia. And now he's one of the best while he's playing for New Pulse. Just has had an impact tonight. Now 16 points on the night for him. He's just, he's everywhere. And it's, it's really helped New Pulse today. And A.J. Knight might have been the piece that New Pulse needed to try and get over the hump and get into that Suniac final as they now have a 23-point lead, 11.49 to go, as Knight lines up for a second free throw. And they're going to swap around a couple of players for the Red Dragons. Didn't like the look of it there. Try and switch things around here down low, but no harm, no foul. They say the saying is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, it's been broke, so fix it, I guess. <laughs> as Knight makes a second free throw. Oneonta inbounds the ball, wooden. The only now the only onto native wooden now with the ball over to Hartz. Hartz over to Brown. Brown now to Castillo. Looking down low. It's up and it's good. Lanely with the layup for the Red Dragons. New Pulse now taking it down the court. Krapinski goes over to Smith. Smith better Blondo. Blondo looks to drive, slows down there, Blondo. Looking for an open man, he gets up to Krapinski. Krapinski now with the ball over to Blondo. Blondo gets the screen. Drives down low. This is over to Krapinski. Krapinski shot. Doesn't fall. Rebound for the Red Dragons. Wooden now taking it down the court for the Red Dragons. Wooden drives. Loses it for a second. Gets it back. Layup is good. And Wooden sinks the shot. Wood picking up his ninth point of the night for Oneonta. AJ Knight to inbound now for the Hawks. And he gets it into Smith, and it's going to be a call against the Red Dragons. As you said earlier, that coach is fired up for Oneonta. Yeah, Cameron Conover is just, he, he's a bit frustrated. Obviously, the team's down 20. That was a foul. He he got the undercut on Dakota Smith there, and, and Caleb Brown gets charged with it, but... I think getting those forcing turnovers is a huge thing now at this point in the game for Oneana. Get some turnovers, get some points on the other end. Don't allow New Pulse to really extend this lead. AJ Knight now with the ball, taking it over the half court line, over to Blondo. Blondo dishing around to Kropinski. Top of the key, New Pulse. Over to Blondo, almost loses the ball, but gets it back. Down low, back top, AJ Knight with the ball for the Hawks. Knight drives down low, dishes it around, and they lose it. Frazier loses the ball there to Oneonta. Good steal by the Red Dragons. Wooden taking it down the court. Wooden fakes the shot. Over to Brown. Brown drives down low, and it's stopped. Frazier with the block, and here comes Blondo. Blondo taking it down the court now for the Hawks. He's going to slow it down a little bit. Finds Kropinski, top of the key. Kropinski fakes the shot. Back over to Knight. Knight slowing things down again for the Hawks, taking their time as they absolutely should be doing with the huge lead here late in the game. Over to Smith. Smith takes it down to the charity stripe, drives, layup. No good, rebound, Red Dragons. Hearts now with the ball. Hearts taking it down the court. Hearts looking for the open man, not finding much. Hearts gets around the screen and it's gonna be stolen by Blondo and there's gonna be a foul on the floor again. Going against the way of the Hawks. Look like it's going to be a reach in foul. Got a little bit too handsy there, Zach. Yeah, and we've seen that a couple times in this second half. Just a little bit too much there and, and can't get charged with those fouls. They, both teams, six fouls apiece, and, I mean, you're, you're close to the bonus now. Uh, yeah, getting to the bonus this early in. I mean, we are saying it's now the second half of the second half, but 9.32 to go. You don't want to be in foul trouble quite yet. Try to save some of those a little bit more for the late game. As now we're waiting for Oneonta now to inbound the ball. Brown to inbound it for the Red Dragons. Brown looking for the open man. He finds Wooden. Wooden with the ball. Picks up his dribble over to Brown. Brown over to Hartz. Hartz drives down low. Hartz layup. It's good. Hartz with the big body play there for the Red Dragons. And we're going to stop at your play. Timeout by the New Paltz Hawks. And Zach, it looks like Oneonta starting to find a little fire, cutting the lead to under 20 for the first time in quite a while. Yeah, I mean, it just 
racking up some points here and you, you got to continue that to go as it, it's going to be difficult otherwise you got to keep putting, putting points up on the board excuse me. and we're going to send it over now to our sideline reporter jacob bradley jake take it away thanks guys the referees not scared to blow the whistle today a lot of fouls going back and forth one guy i want to mention in particular a little bit of foul troubles caleb brown four fouls you want to make sure he is not at all in amongst the play it's going to come into play too as we get deeper into this this half because oneana's gonna to have to start fouling putting putting new Paltz on the free throw line at some point probably in the next five minutes or so we might be expecting some fouls from the oneana side so making sure that you don't get any of your guys that are in foul trouble because right now up on the scoreboard i'm seeing some fours and i'm seeing a whole lot of twos from this oneana side Wonder if that's maybe what they're discussing in amongst the huddle right now, what the game plan is, because it's it still may be quite far, but it's not as far as it once was. Less than 20 points differentiate these two teams, so Oneana still very much in this, and we know they're a team that likes to hang around until the end of the game. Zach, take me back to you. Thank you, Jacob Bradley. Great analysis as always. New Paul's now going to get possession. Blondo to inbound it for the Hawks. As Oneonta now is time is running out for them here in this Juniac semifinals matchup. The number six seed looking to claw their way back against the number two New Paltz Hawks. Blondo to inbound. Blondo to St. Lucia. Stays inbound St. Lucia to take it down the court for the Hawks to get it over the halfway line. Good pressure by Castillo against St. Lucia. St. Lucia gets stopped. Over to Bogart. Bogart now with the ball. Over to Knight. Knight finds St. Lucia. St. Lucia finds Bogart. Bogart drives down low. Bogart's layup is good. Used the big body to his advantage. Without Xavier Hill on the court, Oneonta not finding much to stop Bogart. As now Hartz with the ball. Hartz over to Wooden. Wooden over to Brown. Brown over to Castillo. Castillo with the ball. Looks to drive down low. Castillo finds an opening. He takes the layup. And it's stopped by Fraser. Rebound goes away of Oneonta. Jump ball. And it's going to stay Oneonta Red Dragon ball. Yeah, and I mean, it's the first time in the second half that we've seen New Paltz really get that energy going. The bench is up. They're cheering. And Bogart ends that 6 nothing run that Oneonta went on in, in a two-minute span. So uh, a big job by New Paltz to stop that. They need to continue just working things on the defensive side, and they should be good. And Wooden to inbound the ball for Oneonta. AJ Knight, the man in front to try and stop Wooden's inbound. And getting things set here for both teams. Getting ready, 8.44 to go. 67 for the Hawks, 47 for the Red Dragons. You're watching Suniac basketball on WTOP 10. The ball's inbounded over to Hartz. Hartz drives down low, Hartz layup. Just short front of the rim. Rebound, Blondo, and here he goes. Blondo, layup. Stuffed and stopped, and they're going to call the foul against the Red Dragons. Brown not getting the call he wanted there. Zach, what did you see? I mean, what a block by Caleb Brown. He put his body on the line. He's a bit shaken up after it. But, I mean, what a defensive play there. They get out on the break. New Paltz with the opportunity. But Brown is there strong, and, and what a job by him to block that right at the rim. It was it was an unbelievable play. He ends up getting his fifth foul, Kenny, so he fouls out there. But, I mean, he, he gets the stop there. What a, what a play. A great play there by Brown. And he was really, like you said, he really put his body on the line. As I hear from the stands now, someone else has yelled that he's fouled out, and he's still on the court. Apparently, maybe we're not right there. Maybe he hasn't fouled out quite yet, as Brown's still a bit shaken up from the play. Like you said, Zach, Way to put your body on the line. Way to get there. You can't allow any points at this point in the game if you want to get the comeback victory if you're Oneonta. So now you got to get those stoppages. Those big plays, those high-flying action plays are great as Brown will now head to the bench as he has fouled out of the game. And it looks like we're going to get Blondo. Two shots for the New Paltz Hawks to try and extend the lead to bigger than 20. It's a big loss for Oneonta there with Caleb Brown. I mean, a big presence down low. Uh, five rebounds for him so far today and uh, ends his day early with, with too many fouls there. A, a key piece for Oneonta to lose at this stage. Not what they wanted as Blondo takes the second free throw. No good. Rebound for the Red Dragons. Hartz with the ball. Hartz down low to Castillo. Castillo jumper is good. Takes a warm-up shot there and he makes it. Newpaltz now to inbound. Blondo with the ball. 
Wanda dishes it in tonight. Pressure is on by the Red Dragons as St. Lucia now with the ball. To take it over the half court line for the Hawks. St. Lucia gets it over the halfway line. Dishes it down to Bogart. Bogart looking for an opening as he dishes it tonight. Knight back St. Lucia almost stolen away by Castillo. But St. Lucia holds on. And Castillo is everywhere as he finally gets a steal and it gets over to the Red Dragons. As here they come down the court. Wooden with the ball. Hill three. No good. Rebound goes to the Hawks. Bogart with the ball. Bogart dishes it over to Knight. Knight now with the ball. Drives down low. Knight for first layup. No good. Barely missed it. Rebound goes to Blondo. New Paltz gets the offensive rebound. Maintaining possession and setting that shot clock back a little bit longer to waste more time as Blondo drives down low. Finds the open lane and there's the layup. No good. Misses. Rebound. Frazier misses it as well. Wooden now with the ball. Good defense there by the Red Dragons. Wooden takes it down the court. Wooden on top of the key. Over to Hill. Hill back over to Hartz. Hartz dribbles around. Drives down low. Hartz looks for something. Can't find much. Tries to dish it out to Hill. No good. Out of bounds. And New Paltz will get possession of the ball up 18 with 7.06 to go, Zach. Yeah, costly turnover there for the Red Dragons trying to come back in this one. But credit New Pulse, they've done a good job on the defensive side, really shut things down, basically for the most part in, in this second half and haven't allowed Oneana any chance to really come back into this one. And I'll, I'll keep mentioning it again, the three-pointers have just not helped Oneana today. Two for 13 right now. Just haven't gotten things going from three-point range, while New Pulse, eight for 12 from deep. I mean, a huge difference in the game right now. And they, it, Oneana, I mean, seven minutes, still got hope here. You got to rack up some three-pointers because that's going to get you back here in chunks, and uh, I think they need that at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. Oneana needing a lot of big plays and to get a lot of points back on the board with 7.06 to go. As we said, New Paltz now not scoring as much, just kind of maintaining the game, keeping things slow, burning off that clock, and wasting time. They've been scores for the last minute 50 and are one for five for their last five from the field. But for them... Does it really matter because they're up by 18 points here late in the game? All they have to do is control the ball, do well on defense, and just be in main control of the game, not allow Oneana to get opportunities and not give them the ball back. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to not turning the ball over, control things on offense, run some clock, and just milk away the time in this game. You're not giving Oneana any chance by doing that. I think the turnovers are big. Just don't turn the ball over. They've, they've turned the ball over a little bit more in the second half. Don't get ahead of themselves. They, they need to be smart with the ball, have smart possessions on offense, and they should close this one out easily. They absolutely should, but as they say in most sports, any given day, any given place, and it's college basketball, Zach. It's D3 ball. Anything can happen. Oneonta definitely not out of this yet, but they only have seven minutes and six seconds left to go to mount an 18-point comeback while they have been down more than 15 points for the majority of the game. So to make a huge comeback seems unlikely, but still very possible for the Red Dragons. As Knight inbounds the ball to St. Lucia. St. Lucia also in foul, tr foul trouble with four personal fouls on himself. St. Lucia now with the ball. This is it over to Knight. Knight with the ball. This is it to Bogart. Bogart with the ball. Bogart back to Blondo. Blondo, top of the key, looking around, gets the screen from St. Lucia. Over to Ethan St. Lucia. Looks for the open man, down low is Bogart. Bogart with Hill on him. Being double teamed, gets it up, and he still makes it. Big body play by Bogart. What a play for the Hawks, as Hartz now has the ball for the Red Dragons. Hartz over to Hill. Hill with the ball, fakes the three, gets the jump. St. Lucia goes for it, and he misses. Blondo now with the ball for the Hawks. Blondo taking it down, slows it down a little bit. 16, 16, 6 to 16 to go here. As now Lucia with the ball. Bogart now at the top of the key. Slows play down. AJ Knight fakes it to him. Back over to Ethan St. Lucia. Points and it goes over to AJ Knight. Knight with the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Knight dishes it in the corner to St. Lucia. Bogart gets a smack in the face over the back and it's going to be a foul. I don't think anything else besides that. I don't. I don't think it was any malicious in any way. So, but I mean, the impact of Kobe Bogart, like he's he's just been really, really strong today. Kind of under the radar. We talked about Knight. We talked about St. Lucia, as well as Blondo. But 
Kobe Bogart, 15 points, he's 6 for 10 from the field, 3 rebounds there. Just what an impact he's had today. Yeah, he's been one of the key players for them down low. AJ Knight with 17 and Blondo with 18. But we're going to send it back over to Jacob Bradley, our sideline reporter. Jake, take it away. Thanks, Gents. This Oneana team, I want to give credit where credit's due. They have not backed down out of this game at all. They are still fighting for every single block, every single rebound, and every single last point. It's going to be something that's going to be super huge. We're running out of time, though. Currently 21 points separating these two squads. So it's going to be interesting to see how things progress through the next about six minutes or so. But Oneana, don't count them out. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Jake, as now Castillo has the ball for the Red Dragons. Castillo falls on it, and Hartz regroups for the Red Dragons. Hartz calls for the screen, and he's going to get it. Takes the three. No good there. Blondo gets the rebound for the Hawks, and he's going to be fouled with a reach-in against the Red Dragons. 71 to 49, 534 to go. Zach, it's becoming less and less likely to see an Oneonta Red Dragon come back. Yeah, I mean, they're sending new plots to the line recently a lot. I mean, Blondo's going to knock the, a couple of these down. He's only shooting five for eight today, but more opportunities he gets, he's going to knock more down, and it's just going to continue to extend this lead. It, it's the three-pointer again that, that's coming back to bite the Red Dragons. Another missed one. They're two for 15 on the afternoon. And that's just not going to cut it in a semifinal game. Two for 15 from three is not going to do it. Well, you look at the other end, though. For New Paltz, 8 for 12 from 3. Just about perfect for what you really need in a playoff game. As Blondo drills both of his free throws. And we're going to get a timeout for the Red Dragons. 5.34 left to go. New Paltz 73, Oneonta 49. You're watching Suniac men's basketball semifinal game here on WTOP 10. I'm Kane Gerard, coincided by Zach Malmud and Zach. Well, I just said your name. Let's talk a little bit here. You're Oneonta's coach, right? You're down a lot. You're in a real bad spot right now. What do you have to do now to get your team motivated for this last five minutes and 34 seconds to try and do what some would say would be impossible? It all starts on the defensive end, I think. I, I mean, stopping Newpals, they've done a good job in the second half. I mean, they, they've really controlled things. Newpals had 47 points at halftime. They only have 26 now with five minutes to go in the second half. So, good work done by Oneonta on defense. You got to continue to do that because it'll lead to those offensive opportunities. You got to cash in somewhere, whether it's three-point land, get some fouls, get some shots at the free throw line, whatever it is. It all starts on defense, but it, it comes down to making shots, and they just have not been able to do that tonight. They have not been able to do that, and they've been scoreless in the last two minutes and 54 seconds. One for six for their last six. And from three-point land, one for their last 13 shots. While the defense has been starting to pick up some of the slack, as we've said, the offense continuing to struggle here in the late goings of the game. What they really need now, they have to pick it up. They need the offensive points, or else this will send the New Paltz Hawks into the finals for tomorrow, while the Hawks now is looking to hold on here. As Oneonta is going to roll the ball in to save some time. Wooden picks it up for the Red Dragons. Wooden takes it down fast. Still with the ball. Wooden drives. And he's going to get fouled there. And looks like we're going to get some free throws on the way for the Red Dragons. And Zach, I think you can emphasize this now. It is extremely crucial to sink these free throws. Yeah, I mean, these are huge. And free throws are, are the most important part, in my opinion, of these playoff games. And... It, because it just comes down to maybe a basket or two here and there in, in a lot of these games. So free throws are crucial. you got to continue to knock them down. And we look, New Paltz 15 for 19 on their free throws today. We look at the drastic difference on the side of Oneonta, 5 for 7. Both shooting well from the free throw line. But Oneonta making more costly mistakes and allowing more free throws to even happen for them. As that's going to go out of bounds on the Red Dragons and New Paltz. Will gain possession of the ball here, 525 left to go. As Blondo will be the man to inbound the ball for the Hawks. And he finds A.J. Knight with the ball. A.J. back to St. Lucia. Back up to Knight. Knight takes it over the half line. Knight slowing things down here for the Hawks. Over to St. Lucia. Back over to Blondo. 
Wando over to Bogart. Bogart going to find St. Lucia, top of the key. St. Lucia over by the Oswego State Lakers logo, drives it down low. Over to Ethan St. Lucia, down to Bogart. Bogart looks to drive, jumper, no good as the shot clock expires there. Almost a good and bad thing there, Zach. Not making the shot for New Paltz, but they wasted 30 seconds. I was going to say, 30 seconds off the clock, so you can kind of go either way on it, but they need to now force them to get a stop defensively here. As Wooden's going to get fouled there by Ethan St. Lucia, and he will go to the line 4-2 with 4.48 to go. Yeah, it's it's a good and a bad thing for New Paltz. They don't really need the points, but they do need to get the, the time off the clock, and they did exactly that in their last possession. They definitely did, but, of course, a foul on this end. You're giving some opportunities. Only honor to continue to hit these free throws and, and try and just chip away at this lead. Not too much time to go, but I mean, we've seen crazier comebacks, Kenny. We have seen some crazier things in the zeal and around D3 basketball as well. As Wooden now lines up for his second free throw. And he makes it, and now New Paltz will get the ball. Blondo to inbound for the Hawks. Blondo in tonight. Knight was foot almost out of bounds, gets it over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia taking it down the court. St. Lucia looks for Knight and he finds him. Knight down to Bogart. Bogart finds Ethan St. Lucia back over to Knight. Down to Bogart. Bogart turns around, drives, puts up the layup, and it's no good, and he's going to get the foul. Oneonta doing exactly what they could not do there, Zach, and they're going to pick up yet another team foul, allowing two charity stripe shots for the Hawks. Yeah, and Kobe Bogart, I mentioned him a little while ago. He's got 17 now on the afternoon or evening now. It's, it's about evening the time now. I yeah, would say. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's evening. It's 7 12. It's evening. So, but Kobe Bogart, I mean, he's, he's just been so impactful as, as really their big man down low. This team, they're, they're a bit undersized. They, they like to go a bit guard heavy, New Paul's does. But Kobe Bogart gives them a different look. He's been great today. And Wooden drains a three for the Red Dragons to cut the lead down to 18. And New Paul's inbound over to Knight. Knight will give it back to Bolden. Blondo now with the ball. Blondo behind the back over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia looking for the open man. St. Lucia dishes it down to Bogart. Bogart over to Ethan St. Lucia. Over to Sean St. Lucia. St. Lucia drives down low. Turns around, takes the layup, and he's fouled. And he's not quite going to get the end one. But yet again, another foul against the Red Dragons, picking up number 11 on the night now. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really hurt them getting those fouls and giving New Paltz those opportunities at the line. 21 free throws on, on the evening for New Paltz, and now number 22, and it goes in. So it's it's hurt them, and, I mean, last-ditch opportunities now for Oneonta. Yeah, Oneonta needing to find their own opportunities and not give away free shots for New Paltz if they're trying to take a victory here. As we're going to get... A timeout, and now 3:54 to go. 75 to 56 here. Zach, it looks bleak for Oneonta, but yet again, as we said, it's D3 basketball. Anything can happen. The Red Dragons are still not out of it. I mean, what do you got to do at this point? Obviously, we can say that the offense needs to get better, but they've been one for five for their last three. They've been one for four in their last field goals. What do you have to do? Who do you have to find? Maybe even maybe you got to get Teeny out in the court. What do you have to do now if you're Oneonta? to truly find some sort of run to just bring this game even a little bit closer in the late goings. Yeah, I mean, well, Graham Wooden's been pretty good so far, and he's he's hit three of his last four from the field. So try and go to your hot hand there in Graham Wooden. He's, he's been pretty good with 16 points. He's actually the team leader in points for Oneana. I, I think going back to him, he's two for four from three as well. Get him going, give him some looks as well as Ryan Tini, who's their top three-point shooter, like I said. So getting those two going, probably the key for Oneonta. And Tini now on the court, only seeing five total minutes so far tonight, not getting a lot of play. He's now on the court, maybe trying to make a difference here late for the Red Dragons, as Sean St. Lucia will now line up for his second free throw. throw on the way and it's good for St. Lucia. 
20 point lead now for the Hawks with 3.53 to go. Castillo with the ball for the Red Dragons. Castillo drives down low. He'll stop over to Wooden. Three. No good. A.J. Knight now with the ball for New Paltz. Back over to St. Lucia. St. Lucia taking his time down the court. Back to Knight. Knight just going to kind of waste time here. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Most of the steal. He missed it on Bogart. Castillo not quite going to get that one there. Bogart now with the ball. Back to Knight. Knight. Slowing things down. Eight seconds left in the shot clock. Knight drives down low. Knight dishes it out. Ethan St. Lucia, three. Off the shot clock. No good. And that's considered out of bounds there, Zach. So we will get an inbound for the Red Dragons. As the Red Dragons inbound it now to Wooden. Wooden going to let it roll for a little bit and save some time. Wooden takes it down the court for the Red Dragons. Over to Teeny. Teeny with the ball back to Castillo. Castillo, top of the key. Dribbles through his leg. Six to drive. And he dishes it back out to Wooden. Wooden dishing it around. Three-pointer. No good. Rebound goes out of bounds, and it will be New Paltz ball. With 2.57 left to go here, Zach. Yeah, and it's just hurt them once again. Another three ball and a miss. But I, it is starting to get a little crowded in here, Kenny. It is as the Gold Rush game is coming up next here on WTOP 10. The Oswego State Lakers taking on the Cortland Red Dragons. Don't go anywhere after the buzzer goes off here in this game now as St. Lucia has the ball. St. Lucia taking his time, wasting clock. 15 on the shot clock. St. Lucia drives down. Finds Knight. Knight with the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Down to Bogart. Bogart loses his dribble, gets it back. Five seconds on the shot clock. Over to St. Lucia. Three seconds, two seconds. This is tonight, and it's stopped. Great block there by Lately for the Red Dragons, as now, Zach, we're starting to say it may be a little too late in this game. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, they call it a shot clock violation in the end. It's just, it is that time, and and. Oneana trying to get some points here, but it's going to be a, a, a tough one to get back here. Yeah, a tough one indeed for the Red Dragons to try and make a comeback. This possession will be critical for them to try and make that comeback as Castillo loses his own dribble, dishes up. Top of the key, three. No good. Rebound goes to the Red Dragons, keeps it inbound. Castillo gets the ball back, guarded by A.J. Knight. Castillo gets around in front of St. Lucia. Castillo off the top of the backboard, no good, rebound Bogart. And you gotta think they're gonna start maybe fouling at some point soon as Knight now with the ball taking it up the court. AJ Knight gonna slow things down with a minute 55 left to go. Teeny is guarding Knight. Knight dishes it over to Bogart. Bogart now dishes it over to St. Lucia, back to Knight. Knight over to Blondo. Blondo with the ball top of the key. Blondo goes down low. Five seconds on the shot clock and gets the layup. And that may just be the nail in the coffin there, Zach. Now with the 22-point lead with a minute 33 to go. Wooden three, contested, and he's going to get the foul. Three free throws coming the way of Wooden. And now, Zach, we can say we can look ahead a little bit now as New Paltz should take the victory home now, up 22 points in the minute 29 to go. They will be in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I mean, a huge achievement for New Paltz. That's what they really planned on for this season, getting to that championship game. They're hoping to win that championship game tomorrow. It's going to be a tough one, whoever they end up playing, Cortland or Oswego. But this New Paltz team, they, like I said, coming into this year, they added experience. They got some transfers in and, and really some good guys that have, it, have had an impact on their team this season. I think the biggest addition, of course, is A.J. Knight, uh, bringing Knight into the game. And uh, as Rylan Blondo checks out, gets a standing ovation from the New Paltz faithful, bringing in A.J. Knight just gives a a real different dimension to this New Paltz team. You, you get a scorer besides Rylan Blondo, and it's really helped them. And, Ultimately, they're, they're looking for a championship tomorrow, Kenny. He has absolutely been a game changer for New Paltz as they now will start to kind of focus ahead on the championship game. As St. Lucia now has the ball, minute 17, just wasting clock now. St. Lucia with Teeny guarding him. Teeny looking to get a stop. St. Lucia drives down low. Beautiful shot and a great way to take the lane, do what they need to do, and New Paltz will call the timeout, and that's where you're going to assume they're going to put out, take off their starters, put on the bench, and let those guys close it out for the last minute and five seconds, 
And not to look too far ahead, but coming up after this is the next men's basketball semifinal game between the number one Oswego State Lakers and the number four Portland Red Dragons for the Gold Rush event here in the Zeal as it's starting to fill up in here a little bit, Zach. It definitely is. I mean, the crowd's probably going to have an impact. Uh, you and I will be right here for it, so it should be a, a really good one. I think the crowd, like I said, is going to have an impact. It's Gold Rush weekend at Oswego State. Uh, basketball Sudiacs as well as the hockey Sudiacs. So the, the fans are ready. They're ready to go for this weekend. And, uh, what a matchup we have on our hands. Portland, all that momentum coming in from that buzzer beater, a big moment that they had with our Curry hit in the buzzer beater to send them here. They're looking to keep things going in the next game. They absolutely are looking to keep things going. Is there? Oh, he goes for the jam and no good. Wow, big shot there. It's just no good there, and he's going to catch the foul. And yeah, if we're looking ahead, Cortland, they are having all the momentum in the world. And the Lakers and the Red Dragons of Cortland will face off to play the winner of this game, which will ultimately be the New Paltz Hawks for tomorrow's afternoon game for the Suniac Championship, which will be right here on WTOP 10. And you will be hearing from both of us <laughs> again tomorrow. Definitely. Yeah. Excited it's, for it. Yeah. It'll be a good game. Looking forward to it here in the Zeal as now... Oneonta lines up for the second free throw. And it's good. The ball's to inbound now. Dishing it around is the Hawks. Down low. Good stop there by the Red Dragons as Castillo. Three-pointer. No good. Second chance, no good. And New Pulse will retain possession and get the rebound. And New Paltz just looking to waste plenty of time here. Wind the clock down to zero with 20 left on the shot clock. New Paltz layup. No good. Rebound Red Dragons. Wooden taking it down the court now for Oneonta. Wooden deep three. No good. Misses it. Rebound for the Hawks. And the Hawks can just dribble things out here as the shot clock has turned off. And now as 15 seconds wind off the clock, the New Paltz faithful and the bench begin to cheer as the New Paltz Hawks have knocked off the Oneonta Red Dragons and now will advance to the Suniac Men's Basketball Final right here tomorrow in the Max Hill Gymnasium. Congratulations to the New Paltz Hawk on their victory. Yeah, I mean, just a big day for New Paltz and they wanted to get here, but their big time players really stepped up. Rylan Blondo leading the way, 22 points. How about 14 rebounds Ooh. from a guy who's not that Ooh. tall. So he, he stepped in there getting a lot of boards, just unbelievable stuff and as well as the secondary scoring right behind him AJ Knight talked about the addition of him and Kobe Bogart the guy down low putting it putting up numbers excuse me and it's just been a really really great day for the New Paltz Hawks overall yeah the New Paltz Hawks had a great game with numbers from Blondo 22 points Bogart with 18 Knight with 17 St. Lucia with 8 and Ethan St. Lucia with 11. A great overall team performance for the Hawks. But for some more in-depth analysis, we're gonna throw it down one more time to our sideline reporter, Jacob Bradley. Jake, take it away. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Kenny. New Paltz is heading to the Suniac Championship. An absolute dominant performance from this New Paltz Hawks team, including four guys in double digits. Ethan St. Lucia, Kobe Bogart, AJ Knight, and Ryland Blondo all finishing the game with double digits to their name. Something that's going to be huge going into the winner of our next game, which is Oswego and Cortland to see who's going to take home the Suniac title. Ryland Blondo, by the way, we might as well just call him, we might as well rename this whole gym after the guy because it seems like every year he comes here and he absolutely dominates the competition here in the Suniac tournament. Certainly going to be one to watch when they announce the all teams tomorrow, but for now, a big win for this New Paltz team. Zach Kenny, back to you. Thank you very much, Jacob Bradley. As now the New Paltz Hawks are indeed going to the SUNYAC final, and they will watch the next game between the Oswego State Lakers and the Cortland Red Dragons. New Paltz now just sits and waits and sees their next opponent. And Zach, we'll look ahead just a little bit here before we go into our break. What are you looking forward to in the next game? I mean, it's it's going to be a battle of two teams that, that really don't give up. I mean, the hustle plays from both teams are very, very tough. 
on the defensive end especially and I think Cortland needs to get stops on the defensive end if they want to control Oswego and on the other end for Oswego control things defensively it all starts with defense in in the postseason I mentioned it a couple of times during the the first game it all comes down to defense so both of these teams got to be strong defensively they absolutely do, as that is going to do it for the first of the two men's basketball SUNYAC semifinal games. Stick around and don't go anywhere, because coming up next, the number one Oswego State Lakers take on the number four Cortland Red Dragons in the gold rush in the Max Seal. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kenny Gerard, coincided by Zach Malbud. We'll be talking to you guys very shortly. Hope you aren't sick of us yet. Stick around here on WTOP 10.